Welcome, everyone, to the PlayStation Fight Nights. You know how we get down here. Well, we do have a little twist on how we get down here, but we'll get to that in a minute. Of course, I am Ringe. This is Jalen. How you doing, fam? I'm I'm great. It's been a great day, and we are capping off today with some spectacular Guilty Gear, and I could not be more excited. This bracket is amazing, and we are just going to have, like, so much fun going through all of this. <laughs> Indeed, right? Usually how we get down here on the fighting nights is that we have an open bracket that gives us qualifiers to get into the top eight, right? But we got a little remix tonight, like I alluded to. All invitational top eight, of course, double elimination, best of three. So best bring your best game real quick. Top three, of course, going to be best of five as per usual when it comes to the finals format. But yeah, it's going to be all invitational. So that's the little twist we got tonight. And of course, there is money on the line as per usual here for the PlayStation Tournament fighting night so we're gonna bring up the pricing in a moment as you can see first place 200 second 150 third 100 and fourth 50 bucks so you said Jadalyn, this bracket pretty stacked let me hear oh, you yeah. talk through it uh so yeah pretty stacked we're gonna see some names that we are all very well and familiar with including umi show razo hotashi but you know i mean just a couple of top eight regulars at things little small tournaments like evo 
combo breaker, things like that. Um, but also some other regulars as well that we see around in many different tournaments. Puzzle, Dragon King, Cotton Ball, Casino Dicey, and Column, all starting in the upper part of this bracket and fighting for a little bit of that pot and a little bit of bragging rights. Like if you got to an invitational, you want to win because you were invited to play here and you want those bragging rights. <laughs> Most definitely, right? And it has it, opportunities for some of the lesser known players, some of the regulars here to knock off, like you said, the Evo champions, all Razzle, Umisho, Hotashi, all tournament offline champions decorated in many fighting games. Uh, well, Umisho, to be fair, this one, but she's so decorated in this one that it makes up for her <laughs> lack of accolades in other games, right? So, of course, Razzle and Hotashi also have accolades in BB Tag, Guilty Gear Exert, and the like. So, they've been around the block a couple of times. So, I'm looking for them to get knocked off their pedestal. I, that's like the kind of thing that always makes me really excited in these invitationals because it is it is online. You never know what's going to happen. You never know, you know, who's going to pull out what, you know, maybe somebody's got a pocket character that they've never played before. We do have a pretty good idea of who everybody's bringing to this. We have several happy chaoses, no surprise there. Um, May, Nagos, Leos, Bridget. But oh, I mean, Bridget always makes me excited because I think that oh, yeah. character is really cool. And there's a lot of things that you can dive into with the mechanics of that character and bringing into this. Nago with the changes recently um, in December, some really neat things that you have to watch out there. But uh, yeah, you never know what somebody's going to pull out. I mean, Umi Show does have a pocket soul that she uses occasionally, depending on the ma matchup. Um, Razzo yeah, she was using uh, she was using May as well recently, I believe, for the Leo matchup. She was uh, pulling mm -hmm. that out. So there's definitely plenty of surprises that could be looming in the shadows, right? And two out of three, everybody's deadly. But you alluded to Umi Show. She is going to be our first competitor of today. Evo champion. I mean, needs really no introduction at this point. Right. Bursted onto the fighting game scene with Guilty Gear Strive. Going from one shooting game to another, pretty much, when she picked up Happy Chaos. And, I mean, has decimated everybody in her wake. Of course, there's some players that have been catching up there's been some players that have been giving her problems but overall she's looking to solidify her place as the best with arc rebel finals coming up as well of course but her opponent let me see so we've puzzled. got puzzled yeah so another another young young gun if you will uh playing may coming here from las vegas nevada and i mean this is i think gonna be a really interesting matchup puzzled you know, coming in with a character that has to get in really close to do some damage. And, you know, Umisho is, Umisho's played some of the best maze in the world, including Slash. So this is going to mm -hmm. be an interesting set, especially like you keep saying it's a best of three. Oh, yeah. You, you have to put everything on the line immediately. Yeah, so the good thing about May, right, in that format is that she hits so extremely hard. And one of the things that she's going to have that is at least decent up against Happy Chaos is that she can traverse the screen very quickly, right? So if you don't have the curse upon her, then the reticle might not lock on immediately. You can bypass a shot if you're like mid dolphin, if the timing's right, right? Of course, it can work out that way. It's something that you kind of have to hold for more than you can really plan for. And, like reliably so that's something she'll have in the matchup at least and again with happy chaos's lack of defensive options she, she can get ran over but it's crazy because umisho makes up for that weakness so hard with just her decision making and her overall skill yeah that's the one thing that i feel like separates umisho from a lot of the rest of the pack is that her decision making especially her decision making on the fly is so clutch and now that there are more Happy Chaos players and the prominent Happy Chaos players that are putting yeah. some new tech onto the line, and she's picking up on that. Like It comes to mind there's another player who does a lot of the more like CQC style of Happy Chaos, who's like right up in your face all the time, using the tack roll, side switching, you know, and then putting out some kind of RC to change up the pressure. And Umisho's been picking up on that style of gameplay, especially uh, I was talking to Razo at Frosty Faustings, and so Razo and Umisho obviously trained together a lot, mm. and uh, Razo was talking to me about how she is getting Umisho ready for uh, Arc Revo and what they're doing to train and things like that, so I know that Umisho's been just like pulling out new tricks and trying new things and trying to prepare for this bloodbath that's about to be, you know, coming up at Arc Revo. Yeah, most definitely, right? Of course, Razo, main character, Leo... Tempest also going to be at Arc Revo, right? One of the Premier Leo players in North America, in the world, to, to keep it clear. And yeah, definitely going to be needing to be training that. And we've been talking a little bit about the May Happy Chaos matchup, right? I'm glad that, that you brought up the fact that Umi Show is so good at the up-close game now as well, because we've been talking about how May's going to need to get in, right? That 
if Umisho wants to choose to play that game and actually like try to curse up and just kind of zone for a little bit, right? Because she's so potent offensively now that I mean, she might just want to take it to the May, not even play that game where she might miss a shot, which means the round, right? Just try to get offense quickly. And then as you mentioned, the CQC roll cross ups. She's got nasty stuff with the jump 2K, BRC setups for the fuzzies, jump S setups. It's all all nasty, all nasty all the time. It is so ridiculous like the things that you can do with that character and but and then again i don't want to discount may as the character because i feel like a lot of people put her on the back burner sort of i would say around june july ish of last year and then slash yeah. just came and completely shook everything up and was like no 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 look at what this character can do so i love okay. seeing i'm as much as part of me dies every time i hear totsugeki um <laughs> I, it's just it's a soul crushing sound um it's still great to see that that character is seeing the resurgence and getting sort of the second look that she deserved coming into this. It, 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 it'd be like that, you know what I mean? And I agree with you, especially <laughs> it'd be, because it'd be like that with the Totsugeki, right? Have you tried the other languages? Like, what do you play in? You play in Japanese? I play in Japanese. Okay, if you try, I can't remember. I feel like people complain about the English voice as much as the Japanese voice. Korean voice might be up your alley. You might want to try that. We'll see. We'll see. That's true. But as you mentioned, right, it's cool that May definitely has some moments in the sun now because, like, so many people dropped her when that patch came out, like you mentioned, around June, July. And they were just like, nah, the changes, I can't play, like, these brain-dead strats. And I only say that because I asked Slash about it. And I was like, bro, what's the real juice with May? Is she weaker? Is she stronger? stronger and he told me the only thing that got nerfed about may in that patch is the brain dead stress that's those were his words and then he went on to get what second place at evo or top whatever it was at yeah, evo it was right second. yeah yeah so i mean on that character on that version of the character so by all means it felt like it, she got stronger and we've seen the potency with like the mid-screen combos now how just much damage output she doesn't even need the corner to kill you off from 60 70 percent so uh, because of that i mean i definitely like to see the character represented more i i like that you know we talk a lot about you know oh as the game has developed and you know we keep doing x y and z uh so I, just as a reminder to everyone, like this game hasn't even been out two years yet. And that yeah. to me is mind blowing. Like we've had this much development in a year and a half, this many additional characters, because what we're up to six now, six uh, DLC at least, characters. At least I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, Bridget and Kai, or I'm sorry, Bridget and Sin, wrong, wrong Kisuke, uh, <laughs> came out recently. And, you know, we're getting. There's going to be more characters. There's going to be more stages. Yeah. There's going to be more patches. Like, this is not something that is hidden information. You can find that anywhere. And yet we have so much depth that has changed over the course of the last year and a half. So mm -hmm. many people have, like, tried new characters. Or you have people like Hotashi who have who found a home with Nagariyuki and regardless of how many times that character has been changed. Hotashi has stuck with it and has found considerable success. Yeah, most definitely, right? I love seeing uh, just how people kind of develop over the course of a game's lifespan. That's definitely why I think the most beautiful things about fighting games, regardless of patches, like players stick with their characters and then you see them flourish, right? Like we're getting to see more Go Lewis's with like the Dark Rise and whatnot of the world. And you mentioned Bridget, right? We definitely see Bridget getting plenty of shine now with the likes of Diaphone. I actually think Hotashi has been playing a little bit of Bridget as well. So, you know, finally a character that's come out that he actually like has left Nagoriyuki a little bit for, right? I'm pretty sure Nagoriyuki is still the business character, still full-time, but the, the, I've seen him play the Bridget in some matchups now, so it's cool to see that, like, it can be, like, six, seven characters down the line, right? And there's still new stuff. The DLC characters are still delivering kind of unique experiences. There are touching players that have had tremendous success with very strong characters still in the game, right? Like, Nagoriyuki's not going anywhere, right? Nubenheimer qualified for Agravo Finals. We still see him tearing up the streets. So it's not like the characters lost its potency sure it's been changed in some ways but still one of the best characters in the game it's just the fact that bridget has kind of another creative expression right and that's the why i always think guilty gear strength has been is the fact that you can really get into it and people gel with their characters on i mean for me personally zato is my favorite character across all fighting games so personally i could say that i gel with a guilty gear character more than anything else and that's just one of the really great things about 
Guilty Gear, it's such an accessible game. It's so easy to get into. Well, Strive specifically. It's so easy to get into. It's so easy to just jump in, to try somebody, to push some buttons and find success. But we are going to go ahead and get started. Best of three, we've got Puzzle versus Umi Show. Ooh. Okay, so uh, right, we had the intel that Puzzle might have been playing May initially, but we also mentioned that Umi Show has been practicing the May, and that's what we're looking like right now. So Umi Show is going to be practicing the May again, looking to get ready for some of the matchups for our Grevo. Puzzle bringing the bridges. So two characters that we want to see. Yeah, and I'm mixed, and I love that. I love all of that. But we are going to get some of that fantastic Totsugeki action immediately. Okay, RC is going to keep it safe, but oh my god, the command grab. So smart. I love it, yeah. Establish the command grab early, and then the regular throw as well. They even have any meter to RC. Maybe that's why Umi Show wasn't looking at tech. There it is that time. Remember, we talk about the defensive Umi Show always on display. Oh, definitely. Umi Show's defense has been some of like the most notable things about her gameplay. That was a really nice Roger dive to break that up. And looks like if Umi Show doesn't do anything, they might die. They've got approximately 0.5 health. She the full, okay, I was gonna say, full level 20 wizard if she brings this back on that magic pixel, but puzzled, closing it out, I like it. Yeah, they make yep. it work. They're definitely making it work. I like the way Puzzle's kind of freestyled on the bridge that you mentioned, how she kind of went into the, the Roger dive instead of when it was at the last moment when she only got like one hit of the overhead. I really like that adjustment on the fly, but Umi Show looking to not be on defense anymore. Yeah, does not, I mean, wants to actually play the game that they paid for, for sure. Oh, nice Totsugeki into the RC, gonna be able to probably get a wall break off of this. Oh. Yep, there it is, final Totsugeki, that was real close. Mm-hmm, she had the meter, it would have been dead, but Puzzle barely living now, the one that has to make the comeback. Tried to go with the leg cancel right there to catch it when we show slipping, but ah, ah. no slipping here despite the water. No, it really feels like that first round was just information for Umi Show. Nice backdash to start in a huge counter hit with the Totsugeki. Totsugeki again. I'm sorry, Puzzle. Do you live here? This is your corner. You just have to hold that. The 9 to 5 on the corner working it out, but Puzzle does escape for a second. Got their close sets as well. Yeah, gets a decent conversion. Knocked it down the corner as well. Ooh, with the tag on the charge. Excuse me, the tap dust. Love that use of the tap dust. It was a really great way to change up the offensive pressure and just sort of throw Umi Show off of her defensive game. Ooh, big counter hit on both parts. Oh boy, yes, FD gonna miss that entire super, which is great for Umi Show, but it's not great if you can't do anything. <gasps> You're joking. Ooh, the big Orca in response, huge damage there. That was actually one of Umi Show's traits on this character. I saw her playing against Chip as well. That was like a character that would constantly get hit by the upwards angle on the Orca. Puzzled right now, though. Still has a decent spot. PRC to cover the recovery and catch the yo-yo toss. Beautiful recognition from Umi Show. Umi Show is so incredible with the way that she calculates her approach. I mean, we're talking about the defense, we're talking about the offense, but the incoming approach is something that I don't think we've really talked about. And she is so choosy about where she comes in and where she doesn't. And that moment with just the empty jump, it was a neutral jump, a slight backdash, figured out what was happening, then put the move down when she knew she was safe. It was so smart. Yeah, definitely, right? You could see the experience paying off. Even on a character that she's a little bit more inexperienced on, it just doesn't matter because her game sense is so high, right? And that's something that carries over from character to character. It's just about picking the optimal answer, and that's kind of what you gain with the experience. But that's why we've seen her. We've seen her do work on the soul, as you mentioned, the biking. Like, it's not just the happy chaos. She's ridiculous at the game. Yeah, and I mean, I know there were some times where people would say things like, oh, Umi Show is a Happy Chaos player. No, Umi Show is a Guilty Gear player. She's totally got this. And she clearly has a good grasp of the game sense and the game mechanics. Again, look at that air movement. It's just really ridiculous. It looks crazy, but it's so calculated. Man, these vague combos, bro. You talk about Totsugeki being cursed. There we go. Get the command grab going. Establish the panda. Yeah, ooh, backdash again, trying to keep it safe. And then the 6-8 coming out from Bridget. Puzzled is trying to put the pressure back on Umi. They're doing a really good job here, but once again, challenged with the Orca. Oh, and it kills, that hurts my soul. Yeah, that is the Umi show special, yo. She's got the 50% meter on deck, and there's a gap. The Orca's coming, so it's definitely something to keep uh, your head on the swivel for. But of course, again, this is two out of three, right? So Umi show is on set point here. Umi show is cooking, and 
And I don't know what Umisho's making, but I want some, because it's going to be delicious with how well it's coming out here. Incoming, and then just fakes into the grab? Umisho mm -hmm. is so smart. I want to see more of Puzzled's gameplay, because that round one was so good for Puzzled, but I don't know if they're going to get to do anything. Yeah, I don't know about it. We get the yo-yo to cut off the dolphin for a little bit there and the RST. It's a lot of blocks coming because of the air. I really like the 6 age attempt, but are you kidding me? The orca as you're about to land? Now, I've seen some rude things from Umi Show. I didn't really put together what she could do on the May that's rude, but now I don't want to see it ever again. No, like that was three for three. That was three oh, times you made a move and it was punished with the orca and three times that that worked. And two of those three times... It was round over. What's messed up, too, is that Puzzle tried that earlier, right? Like, the air is super when you're jumping in to try to catch somebody's anti-air. Umisho doing the exact same thing there. It, that that right there, legitimately, I think, is the thing that makes me the most salty in all of Guilty Gear Strive. Like, that specifically. Like, going to anti-air, May, and getting Orca. Like, I do not want to play anymore. Just unplug the whole thing. Like that's like just straight not, up. Just straight up, just unplug the PS5. We're done. I'm good. I'll come back tomorrow. I'm good. <laughs> I have learned my lesson today. Yeah. It was don't jump. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, no, I I feel that. Um, but that is going to be Umi Show moving forward into our winner semifinals. Puzzled, not out of it yet. Going down to that lower bracket. Uh, we have, good lord, we have so many so many good matches. Like everything. This is an invitational. Like everything is going to be great. So Dragon King versus Razo, Razo V Sharp, uh, coming up next. I think I think they dropped the V at some point, but in any in any case, uh, Razo, also twenty one, um, known for the Leo. I came across as you had mentioned earlier, Ringe. I came across them in BB Tag initially, mm -hmm. and they were a killer, a murderer in that game as well. And then we're just able to take their skills and really apply them here. So they have just been on a tear this entire path oh, gosh really i mean from year a year and a bit now just showing and paving the way with this character and being a larger than life player yeah definitely and i think what's cool about razzle is that i'll, I'll never forget right it's gonna be messed up if then i'm wrong about this but she was the one that won the very first offline tournament for guilty gear strive it was like some pax offline event shortly after the game I'm came out sure so that's right yeah, they've been doing it since the beginning, for real, for real, right? But we got Dragon King on the other side, coming in with the Nagori Yuki, you mentioned, right? One of the strongest characters in the game. We've seen plenty of clashes between Nagori Yuki's and Leo's, so another one for the books. And of course, we got so much experience on that side from Razo. I want to see if Dragon King can maybe catch them off guard a little bit, try to play it kind of differently, but with Nago right, it's just like your offense is so potent and so powerful that they kind of all just want to rush you down and then overwhelm you, get the high blood level once you're cornered, and then kind of come at you that way. But Leo's got some decent tools in the matchup and some ones that are like really nuanced that Razo knows about, right? Like when you do have that level two blood and you have the extended nor sword normals, sometimes even though they're all disjointed, she'll wake up with a flash kick and then it's a clash and she immediately knows what to do afterwards, right? So just right. to take advantage of it. It's going to be scary for Dragon King. Hopefully he's as familiar with the kind of nuanced situations as Razo, because if not, it's going to be trouble. Yeah, that's definitely the thing. When you when you have these um, invitationals, like you you expect on some level that you are that your opponent is familiar with your with your matchup with your character, and then you look at your bracket and you're like, oh, I'm playing Razo. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> like you just have to totally reevaluate what you're doing and what new things you can bring to the table because you know, with a, ca a character, <laughs> not a character, with a player like Razo who has seen so much Nagaruki, who has fought Hatashi. Who, who does play Naga very specifically, to be fair, like you have to bring in really new ideas, fresh ideas. Like you can't just come in and 2H Beyblade constantly and, yeah. you know, have that be your decision making process. You have to bring something new. And now with the changes, how the blood meter affects the damage output, you have to be so careful because like there have been yeah. you know players who have plopped the popped the blood gauge and it's just turned out terribly. Sometimes they can use it to their advantage. It just really depends on what you can do in the heat of the moment and have that quick decision-making process. 
Yeah, right. How confident in you are your in are you in your one turn abilities, right? When you get on that offense, like are you gonna risk that blood pop because the subsequent sequence is gonna be killing your opponent, right? It's definitely something that Nagori Yuki players bet on all the time. But I like the fact that you bring up like, okay, I might have the Leo experience, but this is Razzle, right? As the old adage goes, there's levels to this. So you could have a lot of Leo experience, but do you have the Leo experience of someone like Razzo, who is the one of the best in the world, right? There's few Leos on their level. So because of that, it's always a tall task, right? But you might have the advantage because, as you mentioned, we've seen Razzo since the beginning constantly and every weekly possible, every invitational possible. They're always there. So there's a lot of footage to study. So if you're able to do your homework, if you're able to kind of take advantage of that, you might not have as much footage to study as like Dragon King, right, in this position. So you could take advantage, maybe try to call out some big habits, make some big bets. And again, in this format, you'll have a chance. Right, right. Um that is very true. And uh, sorry, my camera seems to have frozen. Hopefully it unfreezes short. There we there go. There it is. Ah, oh, fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get into this next one. So we've got Dragon King versus Razo. I'm excited. Now, of course, this could, you know, they could totally mix us up like how they were last time. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, we're expecting this one thing. And then they're just going to pull out different characters. This is what I expect, but surprise me. That sounds fun. Yeah, right. I know Razzo had dabbled with the bike in a while back, like when she first came out. I don't really recall who I most recently saw Razzo play besides the Leo. I would like to see them play uh, Gold Lewis. I think that'd be a fun Razzo character, to be honest. Um, doesn't have the flash kick, so that's kind of a disappointment, but does have the reversal super that could do a whole lot of damage. But again, we'll see if that's what Razzo brings to the table, her usual business character, or if Dragon King is going to kind of upset the balance as well, right? Then Nagori Yuki, he has a pretty decent tools in that matchup. As we mentioned, if you can get the higher blood up and take advantage of the range on the sword, you can kind of slice through the projectiles. So Leo can't really rely as much on it. the very potent fireball game that he has. Definitely something that could catch him slipping. So we'll see. There's maybe some better answers that Dragon King has in his stable of characters. It's definitely one to watch out for. Yeah, I completely agree. I really, I think that analysis that you just did is so important because it breaks down exactly what people should be looking for. And, you know, yeah, this is very, very high level Guilty Gear, but these, these concepts in small doses are things that you can bring back to your own game plan and your own gameplay and, you know, get out of floor seven, get out of floor eight, bring, elevate yourself, get out of floor four. I don't know. Sometimes I try new characters and I go all the way down to floor four. It's, it's fine. But uh, we're going to get into it now. We've got Dragon King and Razo on the characters that we expected. Indeed, indeed, right? So I want to see what the opening gambit is. I always look for that, especially in Nagori Yuki matches, because she's one of the best round openers in the game. I consider it the best round opener in the game. So that's something to always keep an eye on. And the Razo will definitely 99 second flash kick. So I, I oh, hope yeah. we get to see that, honestly. Oh, yeah. Razzo, flash kick, Super it's like two peas in a pod. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're made for each other, honestly. I don't know how they do it so consistently, but most dangerous flash kicks, I think, across all fighting games. Oh, yeah, it is terrifying. It's also terrifying if you whiff a flash kick, though, because you are guaranteed to lose 50% of your health. Oh, so we, no we did see the Shizu at the, the round start, yeah. Unfortunately, no flash kick. Well, just... I'm sad now. It's okay. We have plenty of rounds to go, right? I, I <laughs> would honestly bet money on it happening rather than it not happening. Oh, got the instant block at first, but still not really prepared. Razzo, I like this. Kind of keeping the pressure compact and safe early on, right? Yeah, you see a lot of tick throws. Oh, a lot of just kind of filling out what Dragon King wants to do safely. Berserker ah. Slash as you get up from the slump. Now you're on the wall. Super, just to make sure the big boy goes down. That was... That was precise. That was just... Surgical. Surgical. That's exactly the word I was about to use. It was surgical precision. Systematic dismantling. Like, hey, we got a 92 second flash kick. Let's go. Yeah, well, when you said precise, I was like, it really was, though. Like, you hit the nail on the head. Like, the way Razzo approached that. But now, we're getting a little bit of the wild side. Dragon being so confident that Razzo would burst there. Just does the close nest and then lets them recover. 
I love the cross through there that Razzo just did, and the the R two after the flash kick abbreviates the whole thing. And you're close to the wall; you're going to get the extra damage from that. I mean, did anybody time that? Because I think we're going for a speed run. Good lord. Yeah, man, it, it was a shame. Dragon King had an opportunity, right? Doing the close test on the, the big counter hit after the blocked flash kick. It would have given him big damage, but he just didn't want to commit. He thought Razzo would keep the gas to the ground, thought they would burst and try to keep the offense going, but wrong, one wrong bet will cost him. Ooh, I love the idea of the neutral jump from Dragon King, but Razzo was so ready for it and filled in with a low, but this is, again, good hit out of Dragon King. That time, that wild black pick is punished, and this is all not oh. Dragon King. This is detrimental. You had to burst, but the BRC is going to punish it as well. That was Dragon King's to lose, and he lost it. Oh no, snatching the feed from uh, the jaws of victory. That's what we like to call that one. Oh, that, I mean, I thought the Dragon King had it. I thought it was like, oh yeah, this is the run back. And then he wasn't paying attention to blood and that's the risk about playing Nagariyuki. Oh yeah, it seems like he does have like this neutral jump strat on defense that's actually working out more than I'm expecting it to. And he definitely had the last round in the palm of his hand. So despite it getting away from him, hopefully he gets shaken off. Remember the positives, of course, Razzo and they get their chance. Both players just awaiting again. You can see how much Dragon King is respecting these options that Razzo has, right? They're respecting the flash kick. We saw the burst respect earlier. No respect on the side of Razzo, though. No, no. And the thing is, I think Dragon King is being too respectful. And oh, and Razzo has the RC to keep the safe and then goes through the overhead into the low, uses the wall bounce to clean it up. That is a fast 2-0. Razzo is going to be moving on. So it'll be a Razzo, Razzo versus Umi show in the uh, first semifinals. Yeah, most definitely. I think that's what a lot of us expected, right? Two of the best players in the world at Guilty Gear Strive, so no surprise to see them in winner semis. But Dragon King, honestly, I was impressed with the showing in game two. Definitely almost had the first round. Second round, I like the interesting options. You were highlighting the neutral jumps even before that last round. And he got some good damage, and he found these moments where he can get these opportunities to take down Razzo. But he definitely left some damage on the table, being confident that Razzo would make these the defensive choices that they didn't end up making and because of that i mean it just gets away from you so quickly like you mentioned it takes a little bit more damage now because of the blood levels and razzo always always keen to kill you off yeah that's the thing i love that at one point during the middle of that last round range you brought up about how the respect levels and how dragon king was being really respectful but um but uh razzo was not and that really divided the two players because some of it was like respect out of fear whereas yeah. Razzo was just being I don't want to say that it was disrespectful it was certainly not respecting the spacing or like the threat that Nago can put onto the screen like Razzo wasn't afraid of it and you could tell there was a moment where Dragon King put out I think it was just an errant 2H and Razzo just straight 5D in there or 2D. It was a 2D. It was just shoot, yeah, the and sweep, ended yeah. up taking him out with that low. And that opened up a huge opportunity for Rezo. And that was a big difference because there's a time and a place to be respectful. And that was not it. Yeah, exactly. And I like the fact that you didn't say it was disrespectful, right? It was just the fact that Razzle really exudes confidence. That's what I think most strikes me about their gameplay, of course. But let's get an update on the bracket. As you mentioned, Humi Show and Razzle going to be in a winner's semifinals. Look at nice, prim and proper where they're supposed to be. On the other side of the upper bracket, we got Cotton Ball 16, Casino Dicey, and then Colum and Hotashi, and of course, Dragon King and Puzzled. Gonna have to duke it out in the loser side of things. Oh, I'm... Oof. That's exciting. Oh my gosh. Sorry. The, the the number, the age number has <laughs> that has also aged me. I I am Oh, I am over twice that. Jesus. Um yeah. well, us on the other side of the desk, right? Yeah. yeah it it strikes home you're like, "Wow, these players. Uh, these guess players. We'll, guess this is why we're back here." Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't have that I don't have those young reactions anymore. <laughs> Um, but the Cotton Ball going to be, which is a fabulous name, by the way, uh, going to be playing the Happy Chaos coming at us from Tampa, Florida, an entire 17 years old. Incredible, incredible. So we've actually seen the whole, a big range. We've had 17 all the way up to 34 as far as our ages. But I think that just speaks to how Guilty Gear is. And again, the accessibility of Strive as a game and how you can play it at any age and be successful. 
Most definitely, yeah. I love seeing the young prodigies come up. Casino Dicey also on the younger side, right? 23 out of Atlanta, Georgia. Holy, bringing the Bridget to the table again. I like the Bridget res representation. Me too. Character's sick, man, right? It's not only that I think she's really cool and actually fun to play. I definitely dabbled with her a good bit. Uh, when she first came out but i think she's got some sauce and like genuine strengths about the character so uh definitely looking forward to seeing casino dicey go off but cotton ball i can't picture anything but like a rabbit holding a dual sense like anytime i hear cotton ball that that it's just a, a name for a bunny for me bro like it's forever you're so right though just this little like Puffball holding a dual sense like that's yeah. th that's it that's all i've got that's my image and that's what we're gonna stick to uh I love that you're talking about the Bridget and what she can bring to the table. I, too, am a big Diaphone fan. I like watching Diaphone's content and then what he's been discovering Man, and showing with this character. Society. And then recently so was making a video and was like, oh, I can't talk about this because I can't show you everything. So there's a lot on the table for this character. Yeah. We are going to see the Bridget. More Bridget. I think that's great because I feel like this character is really just scratching the surface 100 percent. when you got the tools that she does like to be able to manipulate in different ways like with the yo-yo setups like being able to pull out the delayed yo-yo you have the yo-yo that you can kind of condition them with that goes out with the hit first she has the different follow-ups to the skate like there's a lot of things her jump d is like this natural throw bait thing at certain timings so yeah i mean she's a really cool character and of course the role right obviously oh, so yeah. many ways to manipulate that yeah, she's got the segue and we are moving. But speaking of moving, uh, Cotton Ball was doing a really great job using that tack roll, the 2K CD to get out of it. Curse is applied, but then just the jump over side switch, really nice. Oh, wow. We have a lot of people who have spectacular air movement in here. Are we going to go for the wall slump combo? No. Yeah, you're laying them tech, and it looked like you got an air hit, so it was going to be able to slump, so just takes the damage in the wall break. Knows they only need one shot to go, but no more defensive options here. Did just build to the 50% meter. Oh, no, that was Casino Dicey, excuse me, and immediately used it. Looked like I got an execution error on the cancel. Yeah, just being possible, because that, I mean, obviously that overdrive doesn't go particularly far, so I would expect execution error, but it's unfortunate. Yeah, most definitely Casino Force just keeping the bullets loaded, finding the hit. Oh, I thought we were going to get some stylish right there. The delayed kick into the shot. This came up a little bit short. Now going to give another chance for Casino to get his rocks off. And why are she resets, but an oh. offensive burst to keep him in the corner. That was very gutsy of Casino. Oh, nice command grab afterwards was the setup. We got Yo-Yo out. Jeez, this is so much back and forth but looks like cotton ball comes out on top and no i lied there's an rc that comes out <laughs> from casino dicey this is so back and forth nice indeed right so if you're bridging in this matchup if you can get into that 5h range that's a pretty good option up against happy chaos oh just nice say that those dumps from long distance dp oh yeah you don't want to get bullied by happy chaos especially with the way con's been playing it's been all out aggression hasn't really been trying to bait out the dp at all wall slump yeah, welcome. Yeah, and then the break. I like that idea, especially because you know, you're going to be able to build up all that tension, which gives you so many more opportunities to tackle after. Casino has been spending so much tension on FDing. They had nothing to work with. Yeah, it's a great thing to highlight because, like, FD in this game, it's a good tool, right? It pushes your opponents away. It can, like, cause block strings to whiff, and you can take advantage of those moments where your opponent's not expecting to whiff. But it does cost meter, and if you're just getting obliterated and your opponent's taking into account that pushback and just working in these micro dashes or canceling into longer range moves, then, I mean, it, it really works against you. Oh! The super yeah. focus comes out from Cotton um, almost was wasted just because of Casino doing a really good move set right there. The DP is going to break that, but Cotton has everything in their corner now. They've got all yeah, that Cotton. concentration, and now the YRC is going to reset. So not sure what's going to happen. I love the yo-yo coming back, though, but that might be it. Yeah, because, you know, he kind of has relied on the skate into the cancel to kind of apply pressure. And it's a great tool when you have the RC, right? Didn't have the meter there, so Cotton, clean punish, set up shop again. All it takes is one more shot. With the curse on it, it was only a matter of time. Now on set point. Dual two. Let's rock. Walker, trying to get yeah. frisky real quick. Casino does finally get an opportunity here. We got the corner. 
Maybe look to establish his command throw or instead just another dash up throw. I like doing that in response to the FD. You know your opponent's blocking and they're not really going to be thinking about something else. This, this is a lot of good corner pressure. It's forcing Cotton to make some decisions that were really... They just weren't, they weren't good decisions. They were not great. They were very risky decisions. Not dead though, which is always horrifying in this game because if you leave somebody alive, that means you have a chance to die. Indeed, right, and Casino taking on the clone, but pay for it with a little bit of life, and Khan takes the RC, wants it to get that focus meter back as well as the bullets. Yeah, 100% tension, though. You gotta know, when your opponent has the 100% tension, especially after a round break, they're gonna send the super. They got the meter to cancel it, stay safe, especially if it's gonna kill. Yeah, definitely. 2K2D, side switch 2K2D. I mean, what a great set of moves. 2K2D, bless buttons for every character. I love them. I like Khan, he's been working in some more of this 6P now in response to the rolls. has definitely made Casino second guess some of their approaches. And this, this air movement from Cotton has been so impressive, but I love the way that Casino's been challenging it with these DPs out of Bridget because it's such a good DP and it's stopping Cotton from doing that air movement. Indeed, you're gonna get the wall breaks for some positive bonus. And yeah, Cotton, you can tell, oh, he's really been trying to use these shots to talk about what we did before, where it's like using the anti-airs against the opponent. She's just skating in. Ruthless aggression right now from Casino Dicey. Could smell the victory, knows it only a command grab away and lands it just like that. Beautiful way to bring the set back. I like that uh, Casino hasn't used that command grab overly much because when it is yeah. used, it's been so effective. And that's what you need to do because the command grab is an incredible move and it does a lot of damage. But if you overuse it, you put yourself in a lot of danger because there's so much recovery off of it. So yeah. the way that they've been doing it just so sparingly is terrifying and very effective. Yeah, when it comes to stuff like that, the command grabs or like wake up DPs, I like it. There's two schools of thought about it to me, right? It's you do it early to make your opponent think about it forever, or you don't do it unless it's a really clutch moment. And that was one of those moments, right? So I like Casino's dice to kind of going with that strat and it paid off big. All right, waking up. There's that air movement again. I'm wondering if Casino's going to start using those DPs a little bit more frequently to stop Cotton from doing that. Uh, they're, again, just not expecting that command grab. It's so good the way that Casino's using it. Yeah, definitely good stuff to Casino. Sneaking in at these weird moments again, saving it for the clutch. That was a very, like, moment where you're not expecting to, like, her to close the distance with a command grab like that. Oh, God, tried for a BRC set of biggest YRC. Still the trade to the corner. I like the DPs. Let them know. Yeah. I mean, do it. Those have been so good. Oh, wow. Bridget just barely got out of the curse. And that was one of those times. The command grab was expected, and Cotton backdash got out of it so smart. Now Casino's being dicey. Uh, Casino is being dicey, like their name, with all of those moves that we said, oh, you're being so good at them, and now they're throwing them out wildly, and it's not working out. He diced up this time. Oh, but gets the closest counter hit. Again, Gotten thinking about grabs, I'm thinking about other pressure earlier. Does pick up off the jump as well. Gonna just keep the corner. I like this throw, doesn't get the wall splat, you get some good damage. Now it's gonna come quick, but you have the super. Well managed from Casino. Oh, and it actually killed. Yeah, I mean, having Chaos doesn't have too much health, but I still was expecting him to live through that. I, I thought he would live, and then, you know, just don't submit me to will it kill, because I'm usually wrong. Yeah, there you go. The channel point's gone. This is oh, the setup we want to see with the yo-yos. A couple of a multiple overheads. The first one was well-timed as well, where the explosion is letting the combo happen. Perfect stuff from Casino. Really rolling now. Casino is doing a much better job recovering from all of this. As soon as I say it, I'm sorry. That was my commentator's curse. It was the Happy Chaos curse and the commentator's curse. It was a double whammy, because this is going to hurt a lot. They just got a ball blue on the ball. Hundred tension though. That, yeah, hundred tension. Wire speed. That's a really good use of it. Got to be careful. Going to build up that next fifty percent for an R speed, and then goes into the low. So smart. Yeah, because you know off the bat had been doing a lot of overheads, right? So like really just like funky timing on the low. Caught caught and off guard, but Cotton's still in the driver's seat here. Using the RC to keep the pressure on. Doesn't have too much focus left though. No more bullets actually. Does reload at that moment. Casino needs to close the distance. Does get a jump S. Oh yeah, not trying to pull out the teddy bear just yet, right? I was hoping Cotton would get caught holding up, but instead getting caught trying to set up the shot. 
get the Ooh, low back again with the Cino. timing. It should be over. Casino bringing it back from the brink of defeat right there was down. Had the set point against the opponent, but nonetheless, Cod couldn't quite close it. Open the door for Casino to roll on in. What I really liked about that last round was that Casino just. It was like they got all the nerves under control. All of the sudden, all the things that were shaky in that second round just fell away. Like there were no more wild DPs. It was all much more controlled. Great, great use of tension, using it for YRCs and RCs and things like that to make sure that the advantage was always in their favor. Yeah, and they cleaned up the setups uh, so well as the set went on, right? Really found the timing to where the overhead or the low mix-up was timed so that the yo-yo would go off and give them the proper follow-up. And really just managing the corner damage well on top of that, right? We didn't really see any too too many premature wall splats. Like we saw the drop combo in the corner to get a throw to, again, get some more damage on you before you actually get thrown through the wall. That was really well done from Casino. I like the management. Yeah, the management, I love that word. That's such a good word. It's the right word to use. Like the management of the, of the resources was really good and very well done. So that's going to round out the first three of the upper part of this bracket. But now we have Column versus Hotashi. And we've been talking a lot about Hotashi, particularly because of Nagaryuki, but also because of the Bridget that you were talking that uh, Hotashi was picking up playing. So there, there is the one, the only coming from... Midwest, best region, uh, no bias, all the bias, uh, live in Chicago, Illinois, uh, has their, the Nago on the card, but could pull out that Bridget if they're feeling kind of saucy. Personally, I subscribe to wherever you lived when you started playing the game. That's where you rev for the game. But he pushed Chicago on his car. So who am I to argue with the man? Definitely in the building. Hotashi, one of the finest to ever do it in the Guilty Gear scene. Not just drive and call him going to be on the other side. Rep in Denver, Colorado, rep in the happy chaos. And I'm not sure if uh, like uh, the Bridget was meant for the happy chaos or if he still goes with the Goryuki in this matchup. This is something that I'm looking forward to seeing. Me too. I'm. We do have to mention that Hitachi has a lot of experience with the Happy Chaos matchup uh, as Nagoriyuki, just because of, you know, the number of times that they've run into Umi Show. They run into them in a number of different online and offline tournaments. So the knowledge is there, but it's, you know, do you want to do that? You know, Bridget has the range. Bridget has the range. Go ahead, Hitachi, play the Bridget. Man yeah, I like that, right? I mean, Nagoru Yuki, he can kind of just get stuffed to, on the other side of the screen. He gets, like, handicapped if his blood's high. He can't really use the Beyblade to get in or any of the Fukios. So because of that, it could be a really just one-sided matchup when you find yourself in a bad position. So I like him going with the Bridget. That gives him more options and more opportunities to win the matchup. And he's just been putting in work with this character. So looking forward to seeing uh, what kind of sauce he has today. Me too. I I love this. I was expecting to see a lot of Happy Chaos today. I wasn't expecting to see a lot of Bridget. And this makes so me many Bridget. Lord, he is so aggressive on this character. That's not something I see with a lot of Bridget's, but this is unheard of. And that's who Utashi is as a player, right? In his DNA, my man is about to rush down. He loves, oh, catching the back dash. You thought you were going to back dash the throw, but that's not God. how the teddy bear works. Dual two. Uh, okay, but also the animation on that overdrive with the Ray Bands and everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love this character, honestly. I think Bridget is like one of the uh, most well-realized characters in this game. Man, I I'm, I love seeing the aggression that I know Hotashi for on Nago and then on, you know, on other characters from uh, Exar, but good lord, this is crazy. Yeah, right, like it's just in his DNA, as you mentioned, the Nago, the Elfon in the past, like he's just always been trying to get in your face. And that's what's cool about Bridget, like she has so many ways to do that from a long ways away because of the roll, because of the skate, even because of the command grab. And then you can switch it up, right? You got just the, your opponent worried about those options and then she has the far edge, she has the 5 age that can kind of counter poke you when you're trying to cut her off on the end coming. So yeah, super cool character. I like the way Otachi's playing it so far. I do too. And did you notice Hotashi's name has his Hotashi on PS5? Oh, yeah. Just want to shout out that this is all being played every single match 
with every player is being played on PS5 right now, which I think is super cool. Yeah, I think Otashi plays with straight up on dual sets as well, so definitely cool to see Otashi repping out here. Oh, and again, that's what we talked about. So difficult for Abby Chaos to just set up shop when the Bridget gets skated on in. You hold forward, you go faster. Like, if you don't have the curse on her, she can bypass a lot of the shots. Ooh, man, Column missed the last part of that combo, which would have resulted in a wall, probably a wall flat. But unfortunate, you gave you gave Hotash the ability to play again. It was brief, but you let him play. Knocked down the clone, putting him back in the corner, and these back dashes are so clean. Oh man, I don't know if that was a freestyle or like uh, an intentional setup from Otashi, but he is suffocating Colum right now. Like it's just straight up overwhelming pressure. You're not allowed to be comfortable. You're not allowed to set up the steady aim. This is, uh, yeah, Hotashi is really in the zone. Hotashi is doing spectacularly, honestly. This is, I feel like this oh, is a showcase man. on what Bridget, what Bridget can do as a character. Nice grab too. The wall is going to break. He builds up the tension, and you're just going to have all of the tension in the world once you get this area shift, dude. Dude, world is your burrito. Go for it. Exactly, Ryan. All the meters stuffed within. Give me an all meter burrito. You heard of an all beat one? Nah. All meter. Oh, stepped on him with the jump 2K, though. I like that at the last moment. It's a big counter hit. This could turn real quick if Colin can make this count. Leaves some damage on the table and leaves the dub on the table. Otashi, moving on. That was so fast. My god. But I really liked, again, I liked seeing that level of aggression in a Bridget because a lot of the Bridgets that I see are hesitant and they are respectful and they're trying to find their openings and find places where they can sneak the damage in whereas hotashi just made the damage happen because of how aggressive they are and how assertive their gameplay is yeah i like that right just manifested the damage like you didn't really need to get any specific hits because he just kept fighting them over and over again it really felt like he got to willed that into existence but i really like what hotashi displayed and what razzle displayed because you could really see the confidence right of these super successful offline tournament players like the way they play is just like i don't care who's across from me i know what i know and i'm gonna put that on display until you stop me and if you can't stop me then you're gonna get ran over and that's just kind of the level that they're at because of the work that they put in. And it's really important to talk about how much work these players put in yeah. because it is not insignificant the number of tournaments that they enter every week and sometimes multiple tournaments in a day and how they are able to just churn out victory after victory after victory. They sink so much of their time into becoming experts at this game, not just of their characters, but of the entirety of Guilty Gear Strive. And that's why they're finding success. They're also able, like, when they finally run into people who are able to counter that aggression and that confidence, they are also the ones who are able to quickly make decisions to change what they're doing to adapt to a situations and i have said it time and time again and i'm sure you have too the advantage goes to the person who can adapt the fastest in this game because this game is over in a blink of an eye absolutely right and you have to kind of put that work in so uh as many situations as possible can become second nature, right? So you can process quickly and just be able to kind of alleviate that mental stack without having to consciously think of so much, of course. But let's see how the bracket has been updated. We got some more matches, some more results in the books. So Otashi and Casino Dicey going to be in the other side of winner's semis. Of course, we have Umi Show and Razo Sharp have already made their way there. Puzzle able to take down Dragon King in the loser side of the bracket. So he's going to be moving on to the quarterfinal. Call him in Cotton Ball. We'll see who survives. Yeah. Um, sad that that was the last we see of Dragon King because I really liked the way they played. I would have loved to see yeah. more of them. But of course, there are many more opportunities. Uh, there will be more times to play and more competitions uh, anytime. You can probably find one on PlayStation tournaments. They're, they happen pretty frequently, so there's a lot of chances to sharpen up your skills for sure. But speaking of sharp, Umi Show and Razo are going to be up next on the winner side of, or the upper side of this bracket. We're still in the uh, winner semis for this. Man, and we're still two out of three. Yeah, indeed, indeed, for sure. So Umi Show versus Razzle, that's going to be nasty, to say the least. But, you know, you talked about how much work these players put in, or we both alluded to it a little bit. And what's cool about Strive is that I think 
there's a, I mean, like in terms of how many tournaments you can enter, there's probably more work that was available to be put in in this game than any other game previously, like because of how yes. good the Neko was, where we're at as a community with so many people running of dope online events. So it's cool to see 100%. But I believe we have our first winner semis on deck, Umi Show versus Razo. If I'm not mistaken, we might get the player cards up, but I'm uh, definitely looking forward to this regardless. I am too. This is a match that, um, has kind of, you know, I feel like this has a lot of historic context. In particular, last year, Combo Breaker, the double KO that, like, shook the entire arena. That was a moment that I will never forget. Also, the sound design was so good in that place that you could, you felt that double KO in your soul. And the way, like, these two huge larger-than-life characters you know, have this double KO and their players are like this big and they are so <laughs> tiny and they are so precious and I adore both of them. So this is going to be another another one of those I feel like. And the thing is here, you're going to see so much nuance that it, it does not matter what character either of these two pick because they are playing each other. Yeah, I, you know, when it comes to characters, I don't know what they're going to bring to the table, right? And it's always cool seeing players like this that know each other like the back of their hands play in bracket because that's when you get the funky stuff, right? Like that's when they know each other's stress. They know the first 20 pages of the playbook. So because of that, you got to go into the deep archives where you're usually not doing this stuff, right? It's cursed. You're like, your opponent flames you for it because you're like, why would you ever do that? That decision doesn't even occur, doesn't even fathom in my mind. But that's the stuff you're going to see when it comes to two players that know each other so well. That's, that's the thing. It's like, what can you bring out when you play the same person 20, 30, 40 matches a day? Yeah. Because that's yeah. how, I mean, if these if these two players play less than 30 matches a day, I would actually be shocked. And, yeah, um, that sounds like a casual day to me, right? Like they're, oh, they're yeah. fitting that in between, like doing the rest of their lives. Like if they were at, like, good, like you said, training for the Arc Rebel Finals or training for some type of big tournament, I'm sure it's hundreds of games a day, right? So oh, like yeah. it's, I mean, in terms of how much they've played each other, I'm sure it's in the thousands in total. Definitely. I mean, I've seen videos on Twitter of them being at offline events, sitting in the hotel room. Everybody else is doing something and they're just sitting there playing Guilty Gear. Like they're like, run it again, run it again, run it again. And they just practice so much. It It's a dedication to the game. It's a get dedication to both of them wanting, not just wanting to make themselves better, but they... They want to better the other person, too, because they both want to see success within the scene and then within each other, which I think is great. 100 percent. And, you know, we talked about the work like there's been multiple stories. There's always instances of, like you said, like they're just in the corner. Everybody else could be socializing. The tournament's over. It's going to blow off some steam and chill out and talk to people. No, they're grinding away. Right. Like they're in some corner labbing out some setup. There's stuff like that in examples of so many fighting games. Right. Like in Dragon Ball. I remember early on Goichi talked about how Fenrich was the one that kept him good because Fenrich would get to the hotel, bust out the setup and start labbing. Right. Like it just one of those things that it pushes people like that i saw inzem a player that's qualified for the dragon ball world tour finals there's a, another dragon ball player over there and he's like bro i've been trying to sleep since 3 a.m and this guy won't stop laughing like that is the work like this they're obsessed with the game you know what i mean and because of that like the results speak for themselves they do and that's just the sort of dedication that you find in a lot of these players here and that you will continue to find as we just keep elevating the fighting game community and the players within it. And we keep finding these points of accessibility and the number of tournaments that people can make it out to across, across the world, really like notably Evo Japan is coming up. There are thousands mm -hmm. of people registered for Evo Japan. And I was taking a look uh, through the players and the number of people from around the world who are flying out to Tokyo to challenge some of the greatest players in the world is incredible. The international representation is going to be spectacular for that. And then we just had the Evo reveal show. Um, gosh, what was it? Uh, two Tuesdays ago? One Tuesday ago. It'll be a week ago yeah, tomorrow. I think like last week. Yeah, 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 geez, be, yeah exactly. Time is, time is a thing that is happening. Um, but that Wait. was... an. 
another spectacular example of, you know, something that's going to bring people together and it's going to be bigger and better. And it's going to be a place where everyone from around the world can showcase their talents and build up to that point. And it's things like the PlayStation tournaments, fight nights that allow people to practice and prepare for those bigger events. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. The, the PS fight nights, like we said before, we're kind of usually an open bracket to get to the qualifiers for this top A where everybody starts in the winter side of things. But today we do have the invitational, but yeah, it's always good. You can go to compete.playstation.com. You see in the top right corner of your screen to get involved. There's also a discord going on to make sure you can uh, find all the answers you need. But right now we are getting to the match. Winner semis, best of three. Umi show. We'll see if she brings the happy chaos. If it's going to be the May, of course, Razzo the Leo or one of the other characters on the wheel we shall uh, get started soon yeah you never know this is this could be character roulette but uh man at a first I don't think I've ever seen these two play each other in a first to first to two best of three I almost want to set a timer because I feel like this is <laughs> gonna just evaporate in situations like this, I always favor Razzo. Like, I think oh, Razzo is the, the, the greatest two out of three player of all time. <laughs> so we uh, that's who I'm favoring. But Umi Show is bringing out the happy chaos. It's all business right now. Oh, yeah. All business. This. Oh, good Lord. I've seen this before. And I've seen this return exchange before. My goodness. This is the thing is like. You've seen it before, you're going to see it again and possibly see it a fourth and fifth time because these two know how the other plays. Oh, and this 2D counter hit Umi Show just going to hold on to the burst. Yeah, I mean, we really saw it, I think, on display there, right? Like, we saw the 236S from Leo, and that's negative frames, and Umi Show tried to dash up, and Razzo immediately was pressing buttons. That was one of those situations where, like, they've played countless times, Umi Show has an answer for those minus frames, but she tried to take more of an advantage, and Razzo was like, nah. And then you have rounds like this where Umi Umisho completely decimates everything that Razo is about to put on the table. So far with the perfect, so Razo has to respond somehow with this 50% tension that they have. There's the use of the YRC, uses up that tension, finally going to break that perfect that Umisho had. But what can Umisho do now with 100% and gaining tension that she has? Yeah, it was a nasty whip punch the Berserker Slash into the corner as well. When we show has the 100 tension, not trying to spin it too early. BRCs, but that she didn't affect Razzle, was still too far away. Putting him in the lions, then again, Umisho, oh, first oh. dodge, then Razzo brings it back. Oh, you cannot give her an opportunity, bro. You will pay for it every single time. That, oh, that was the old die RC. That's what that burst was. <laughs> it's like, like, I get it, especially on a mental level where you think that Razo is going to go ahead and follow up into the air. Like, yeah, use the burst. It's probably going to happen. And then it didn't and just died. Unfortunate. Yeah, that looked like a really late timing on the pillar. I think that super caught over shop guard. Like, word? Like, what What a, like, super late cancer. BRC slowed that one. Tried to catch Umi Show reaching after that, but it didn't matter. Still slowed her down when she did the jump S. So, side switch took advantage. Oh, my goodness. Razzle with the guard break. Enough damage to put themselves on set point. That is so much damage. Razzo is the confidence out of Razzo is ridiculous. Oh my god, I love that immediate tech too, because you knew they were both going for it. That was yeah. great. That's just that's just knowledge, that's player knowledge. The curse is applied to Razzo though. This is Umisho's first real chance. Ooh, that reach was risky, but they were both reaching and they really shouldn't have. And now that flash kick comes out, this is where Razzo gets the party started. The turbulence comes out, and then you get the switch through as well. Oh my god! Oh, the dash of a Hezzy 5P right there. That was perfectly timed. This is incredible. Oh, Umisho is getting into that danger state too, just because they've been backdashing so much. They're actively losing tension, and that's not good. Razzo. Oh! Razzo, that was bonkers. The lightning coming out of their eyes in that set. Like, every decision was crisp and precise. The whiff punishing was immaculate. Like, setting up for the whiff punishes, too. Like, there was a quarter sequence. She backed up, did the dash up 2S right as Umi showed, did a reversal 2K. There was a clean 5K that moved her forward to get the whiff punish earlier. Like, absolutely immaculate play. 
It was. What I really liked, though, in that last, like, three seconds of gameplay is that you saw the same burst that was that oh, Inisho yeah. used in the first round, and it was effective. The burst worked, but they they ran out of air movement. So as soon as they hit the ground, it was all it was all Razo. So you yeah. could see that there was a game plan. It's just you, you ran out of air moves, and that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, Razzle, man, that was ridiculous. Definitely, you can see the wheels turn for Umi Show was looking for some answers, but man, again, we talked that two out of three format, it's just so tough. Razzle blitzes you, just comes out of the gate and really doesn't let you breathe. And it's so tough to get your bearings because you have the increased pressure. Not You know that you don't have those extra games that you usually have the luxury of having. So that only adds to the mental stack that you immediately gain if you go down a single game. And it can happen so quick against Razzle, even to a world champion like Umi Show. I mean, it's interesting because we do get to see these players in longer sets, in three out of fives, a lot. And the difference coming in, the amount of aggression that these players have coming into these two out of threes, is incredible and i actually really like seeing that difference in gameplay some of some people play very similarly but i feel like razo just steps it up a, yeah. a whole lot there's just so much more assertion and you know, assertion of will really onto the other player be it somebody that they're familiar with or not they just go for it yeah, that's one of the great things about Razzle's gameplay, right, is that I usually think they tend to try to impose their will rather than, like, react to what their opponent's going to do, right? They're not really a counterpuncher in that sense. A lot of the time, they are trying to set the tempo, they are trying to establish the pace, and you kind of have to play around them. And they're so good at controlling that, that, I mean, that's kind of where players struggle against them, right, is that they're trying to find their footing, they're trying to find their comfort zone in this tempo that usually they don't have to play in. Like, yeah, she's so rabid that it's like bro like i want to like can we just stop a second i know it's guilty gear and i know it's fast but it slowed down a little bit right not when you're playing against them so oh, because no. of that you you just i mean you have to uh, swim with the sharks or get eight and they got eight they got eight big time uh this is insane but let's take a look at the bracket and see where we stand especially because the lower bracket is going to be moving on as we make it through this upper bracket. So you can see there Razo waiting there in the upper bracket, uh, first part of the upper bracket finals. Um, Cotton Ball took out, or no, Column took out Cotton Ball. Man, oh. that's crazy, because Cotton was doing so well on that Happy Chaos. Uh, but yeah. that means that Column and Umi Show will be fighting each other, and then whoever uh, loses this next one will be going down to the lower bracket to fight Puzzled. Indeed, and this next one being Casino Dicey and Hotashi, are we going to see a Bridget mirror? <laughs> Is that what we're going to see right now? That, you, yeah. you talked about how, you know, we were expecting to see some happy chaos, some Leo, some Nago, you know, the, the typical top tier characters. Bridget definitely has been having some good representation, but I would not have guessed to see a mirror for sure. No, but if we do, I'd be real excited. Um, yeah. Mostly just because I really like in the mirror match situation, sort of dissecting the way that the players are different in their approach. And I mean, just off the top of my head, Hotashi, we talked about it, both of us did, how mm -hmm. how aggressive like Hotashi was, how much it just really went for it and it was insane and just everything was there as far as the assertion and the systematic dismantling that happened it was crazy yeah yeah and i'm expecting him to bring that same pace right because again he's another one of those players where he imposes his will he's done it with nago he did it with whichever character he plays in whatever game he messes with right he definitely is about trying to control the temple he's trying to make you deal with his shenanigans and his stuff before he has to deal with your stuff so that's gonna be i imagine his game plan here we saw casino start to have some good sense about when to let the, the dps fly right so we could see that perhaps to try to slow down hotashi a little bit but yeah hotashi is going to be skating in we saw casino also use the skate from long distance i it has the potential to be a completely chaotic mirror match it certainly does but then you have to think about on the back foot does hotashi go ahead and bring in the nago instead yeah, yeah because they feel totally. comfortable about 
you know, they they are obviously comfortable with Bridget's moveset. Do they feel like they can counter it effectively, especially with the number of like air movement um, and air incoming things that Bridget wants to do just as a natural result of throwing out that yo-yo with Nago's moves with that sword that reaches nigh three quarters of the screen and 2H blessed button like that just clears mm-hmm. your airspace for it's a no fly zone. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. It's definitely something to keep our eyes on because because Bridget likes to be in the air. She has so many ways to kind of manipulate her air movement, right? Because of the roll and her being able to kind of air back dash cancel out of it, or just so many ways to manipulate the way she approaches you. Has the Roger dive as well, right? So she can roll and then go up. Maybe she'll try to do that a little bit to dodge those two H's if she can get like past it at the first like sign of the two H coming out. But it's definitely dangerous because as we know, Nagoriyuki out pumps the damage the game in general just really encourages you to only have a couple of chances at life against the Goryuki, right he's like described as one turn in the game so yeah you you got it or one hit i think it is so because of that i mean you gotta make sure any and all decisions are calculated and the risk reward hopefully will work out in your favor yeah you just i, I don't want to do math in my fighting games but sometimes you just gotta calculate like you got to make sure, you know, it, this is risky. Is it worth it? Nine times out of ten? No. Not against not against Nago. Not against Nago in Natasha's hands. But, so, um... The- I don't know about you, Jade Lynn, but I liked math until geometry. And, like, the angles and everything like that, that's where I got thrown off. So, that like, that's what this matchup is to me if it's, like, Bridget versus Nago. It's, like, what angles is she coming in at? And I'm with you. I don't want to figure that out. No. That geometry was, like the one the one math that i liked um see a lot of, i'm like the only one everybody that i talked to like no oh, i love geometry i'm like well my brain just doesn't work thanks yeah i, I the, your brain works we all just work a little differently <laughs> let's be real um i had to reteach myself math when i was uh, that was a long story anyway i just had to reteach <laughs> it and i was like why didn't this make sense when i was in school man Oy, uh, if only right if only if it's only. like it, math got patched anyway right so it's like math it's different patched. from now yeah it's, it's different it's from it. when you we went to school it's gotten buffed so it's understandable you would only understand now right exactly uh, mm-hmm. but speaking of patches uh mentioned this earlier this so there are going to be continual patches with this game and upcoming. I know that the most the one that was supposed to come up fairly soon for Guilty Gear Strive was pushed a little bit. They're trying to work on some more content and make sure that's ready for everybody. But I believe that was pushed to either later in March or early April. I'm unsure as to which, but I know that information is available. And I believe that's going to include another character for that patch, which is really exciting. Yeah, and you have to imagine, right, I believe the Ark of Apollos is on March 11th, so you have to imagine that it's coming shortly after that, considering how people go about things, how companies go about things when it comes to announcing uh, their additional content for fighting games. I imagine we'll get some word there. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to whatever happens next with Strive because I think the DLC path has been really cool. I think they've kind of gotten deeper and deeper with the creativity. They've got really some characters that have really high execution ceilings like the Happy Chaos. I think the Bridget has a really high creative ceiling as well. Gold Lewis is another character that I think is like super unique just like across all Guilty Gear games. So it is to continue to deliver on the creative side of things. So I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, and I like the way that uh, Strive has reimagined some of the favorites for characters, like Jacko, the way that she was reimagined for this. Jacko's starting to find a number of successes, oh, yeah. um, in particular with some players that we've seen in some top eights, most recently of Frosty Faustings. Um, yeah, and Strive's Adventure. Ah, uh, Adventure. And plays the best best Jacko color, too. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you have characters like, oh, like Sin, most recently, my boy Sin. Um, him being reimagined for this particular game has been really fun. I think they did a great job with his redesign. They kept a lot of the essence of what Sin is and just made him fit within the guidelines that of what Strive is, and I think that's really cool. So be it a new character, be it returning character, I'm excited for it regardless, because uh, it's going to, the creativity, like you said, in the designs have been really incredible. I think it was a tall task to, uh, like, capture the essence of a lot of these characters with their reimagined versions, because the game is 
take significant strides away from previous franchise titles, right? Like it's pretty different from Exer, from Plus R, etc. And because of that, I was really kind of worried about some of the characters and how they were going to be in this game. Zato specifically, like when I first played Strive, I was like, there's no way Zato's going to be in this game, bro. Like I was like, there's no way. And the fact that they like captured him the way that they did. And I'm like, I'm a huge fan of the way he is in this game. So I think they've done that successfully with damn near every character that's in Strive. As you mentioned, like from Bridget, from Sin to the classic Soul and Kai, like everybody I feel like still scratches that itch of why you want to play them in the first place, even in older Guilty Gear games with this one being different. So I hats off from the beginning for me with the way they've uh, gone about implementing these characters. And the way that you can get into Guilty Gear, not only from the characters, but from a system standpoint, because the system mechanics of Guilty Gear are so specific, like with the RC system and um, mm -hmm. Burst, you can find across a number of different anime fighters, but the RCs, Risk, Burst, stuff like that, if you can understand how they work in Strive, you can go back and play the older games and it's not yeah. a problem. Like yeah. I I recently picked up Plus R, um, that's been an experience. Uh, uh, Rev, Rev 2 is where I have most of my previous mm, Guilty okay. Gear experience, so it's very different. But yeah. man, like it, it felt nice to get into that game and be able to find success because I know how to play Strive. Yeah, exactly right. Like it, it, precisely, like you get it's your first Guilty Gear game could be Strive, and you'll still have stuff that will transfer over to the older Guilty Gear games. But it looks and like we are going to get that Bridget that mirror that we were hoping for. So oh, let's see. Let's day. see how chaotic we can get for real. Uh, I'm excited. This is the kind of this is the kind of things that I want for a Monday. Start my week off right. Just go for the world craziest Bridget matchup. Oh my good God. Say, You've done you so much and so little. You thought you were commentating Strive? Nah, Yo-Yo Championships 2023. Well, how do you the that I blinked. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't tell you, to be honest with you. i just been seeing some scrambling, and Hotashi's the one that's found these hits here and there. They're adding up. Oh, and again, the 2S afterwards, you ain't doing nothing. It even combo. It looked like he was trying to time the yo-yo to combo at that second part. Didn't get it, but got the kill anyway. This is absurd. Like, they just go back and forth for the first 30 seconds, and then all of a sudden, Hotashi won. And Hotashi is doing so much work with the exact range. Like, he's staying at range with Bridget, and it's working. What a reversal. Indeed, yeah. Hotashi, he's been sending the DPs, right, from long distance because he knows Bridget has that range. A lot of time you can hit some of her longer ranging, like, far and five Asians with a DP. Oh, Casino, that was such a great exchange, but once again, DP from Hitachi, it forces the burst out from Casino because they were trying to keep that advantage. It doesn't matter. Hitachi stays out of there, is using the yo-yo as a zoning tool now to create space, but that time the reversal was not finding its mark. Oh, yes. He gets the wall splat with a super afterwards. It's going to get real close, pretty skilled from the light. So Hotashi survives for now. This is plus frames. We got RC on deck. Yeah, that's how you knew he was going to DP. Oh, yeah, you knew. Oh, backdashing like crazy. That yo-yo hit, too. Oh, I love the idea to put the damage out on the outgoing rather than the incoming, so it caught Hotashi's backdashing. Same. There's definitely been a lot of, like, outgoing damage yo-yos in this set because, like, they're just able to fly around the screen. So that's something that kind of cuts off both of their passes. Oh, wow, nice with the Roger dive, just was trying to stop anything from Hodaki. Command grab comes out. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the that. regular grab, but still, there was a grab. FD right there. I like that it pushed it away. It kind of caught Hitachi on guard, but Casino wasn't confident. No, it is confident in sending the speed into the anti air. Oh, no, actually got hit by the roll. Clean pickup from Otashi and the roll actually acts as a natural burst bait. Dodges the hell out of it. Otashi still in the first game. Cool. That was that was the chaos that I signed up for. That was everything that I wanted. You know, I imagined uh, the, the entire chaos dimension. I still was not ready for that first game. Oh my, I, you know what? Neither was I, but I loved every second of it. And we're just starting it off the same way. Okay, it was a regular grab. All right. Um, Thriving right now. Thriving in the chaos. He's juggling. Oh, no, he's just juggling. He's playing with Casino right now. 
Yo, we'll send out both again. Yeah, because he'll be predominantly sending out the damage, yo-yo. Not the setup, yo-yo. Oh, no. DP punished this time. Yes. Pretty good damage. Setup shot, but didn't get a safe jump. Just got caught pressing buttons. Gets counter hit. Otashi again trying to bail out DP of his own. Not going to give it to him. YRC does connect. Just waited. The respect game is shown, but nice instant block right there. It's an immediate trade. That's all Otoshi needed. Yeah, and I like that Hotaki even had move input afterwards, and that's why you saw Bridget go flying across the screen. Like, just wanted to make sure for real, for real, that Casino was dead. But now, in this best of three, Hitachi is one away. And this is the confidence, Grims, that you pointed out the first time we saw Hitachi. Look at the confidence, the immediate DP afterwards, and the entire setup to know that that's coming afterwards for the wall squat, too. Incredible game sense. Yeah, well done for Hitachi getting her, I think, most damaging wall break on normal hits oh my goodness saw the start of the burst brc bagdash just to make sure he was out of range and you know we talked about the quick way she has to close the distance that command grab one of the best round closers in guilty gear strive <sighs> that was everything i wanted it to be that was great that was so great and the thing that i loved that was so different is that like we pointed out earlier there were more outgoing damage yo-yos rather than the incoming mm -hmm. damage just because they were so ready to you know put that damage out and because they both were so familiar with the characters move sets i loved the wildness of that i really really liked that hotashi was choosing to use regular throws rather than the command grab mm -hmm. because the command grab is so specific and can be used to you know in that sort of like strike throw situation it can overcome the second like in that throw situation because command grabs take precedence over a regular throw but the way that he mixed that in was a really great way to sort of change up the pressure that bridget can put out onto the screen yeah that's what's so cool about the character is that she has like these options with that command grab because it's a little bit of a funky one right it's not like your point blank usual command grab it has some distance to it you can use it to low crush things too if people are trying to like reversal buttons with like their 2ks or whatever have you so it's cool to see hotashi definitely establish that space and just really maintain it so well and like yeah as you said like anytime the chaos started happening he was ready for it he was letting the dps fly he was making sure that it was not just going to be you bullying me down like because we play the same character like i know that she has these extended hurt boxes i'm going to take advantage of it so otashi i mean he was showing knowledge with the character both offensively and defensively right so you could tell he is a very serious about bridget and I think that's great. I mean, I know that Hotashi has been talking to Diaphone, like we said earlier, and I think the practice has been showing off. And it's great to see the versatility that Hotashi is willing to bring out. Now, if you guys want to get involved in any of these PlayStation tournaments, there are a number of different tournaments that you can get involved with, not just fighting games, but any there there's a whole list of them go to compete.playstation.com where you can find a number of different games that you can get involved with and compete and i've done it before i did um several of the bb tag tournaments which was mm -hmm. really fun and had a great time doing that it's such a great format it's easy to get involved compete.playstation.com and that's where you want to go to get and in, involved in these get put on stream get get for prizes that's what you want to do Yes, most definitely all of that can be found over at compete.playstation.com. Of course, we do have an updated bracket I think we're going to look at real quick with Hotashi advancing into the winner's finals, going up against Razo, right? So again, training partners, all three of the lot, Umi Show, Razo, and Hotashi. So no surprise that they're going to be dueling off again in the promised land of three out of five. So at least they have made it there. Umi Show on the updated, sign, updated side of things in the loser's bracket has defeated Column to take their spot in that lower semis and then puzzled in Casino Dicey. Still have to go at it to decide the opponent for Umi Show. So Razo and Hotashi made it in the money. So as Umi Show, we'll see who who joins them shortly yeah i am i am very excited to see it and cannot wait to see how the rest of this falls out we're going to go to a short break don't go anywhere we're going to come back with some more playstation fight nights right after this
you need to know Always one or two things or a few I'm alone but I'm not alone Hey everybody, we are back with PlayStation Fight Night for Guilty Gear Strive. Excited to be here. We are down to the wire. I am Jadelyn. I am joined by Ringe. How are you liking this so far? I'm loving it. I We're getting a lot of things we didn't expect, honestly. We got the Uma Show May early on, which we may have thought we've seen, right? We may have thought we got the Hotashi 
uh, Bridget, but it looked like that Hotashi is super committed to the Bridget, right? Even playing it in the mirror match, which was definitely a treat to see the chaos, the confidence that Razo has exuded, I mean, always on display, and it's going to be on display once again in winner's finals up against Hotashi, right? That's going to be our match coming up soon. But before we get to that, I want to inform everybody about the community Discord for the PlayStation tournaments that has been going down. You can join the PlayStation tournament Discord to get info on everything that's going down with the esports events, articles, videos, and you can meet other players to kind of improve your skills with and get some games in again you can get there with the qr code or following the link on your screen right now yeah i mean i just recently got into that discord and there's a lot of information that you can get from there so big recommend if you are into any of the tournaments if you're just looking for games if you need any information that is definitely the place to go so let's real quick refresh ourselves on the bracket and see where we stand right now so this is going to be the upper and lower the so casino dicey and puzzled in the lower bracket oh there's the update so puzzled is going to move on to face umi show so that will be happening in the lower part of the bracket and then we are waiting for razo and hotashi in the upper part of our bracket Indeed, indeed, so Razo and Hotashi. Gonna be our next match, right? As you mentioned, Puzzled, able to defeat Casino Dicey. Uh, Treacherous Road for Puzzled in that lower bracket, right? 2-1 over Dragon King, 2-1 over Casino. So definitely some hard fought matches and they had to start with Umi Show. So definitely has been a tumultuous bracket. They're in the money now though. They gotta go up against Umi Show once again. But before we get to that, as you mentioned, the winner's finals is here. We've made it to the best of five promised land. Razo on the Leo Hotashi. We'll see if he keeps training up with that Bridget for this match. I'm expecting him to do so. Let's see if he can finally put the brakes on Razo's momentum. And that's um, saying something because honestly, I come into this match thinking that Hotashi needs to put the brakes on Razo. And we just talked about how aggressive Hotashi is, right? So maybe he tries to thrive or find himself in that chaos and kind of use it against her. I I would love to see that. I mean, I've seen the I've seen the Razo, Leo and the Hotashi Nago match up a lot. And so I think it'd be really fresh to see something with the Bridget to see just, you know, a character that has even more range than Nago. Uh, I, I guess the range thing isn't fair. It's just that Bridget has the projectiles and has a lot more movement options that they're able to execute both on the ground and in the air that can just really sort of throw off the game plan that Leo has. Now, if Leo can ground Bridget, that's incredible. And that's gonna take a whole bunch of moves off of Hotashi's table. But again, like what are these two gonna put out that the other hasn't seen? Yeah, exactly right. Like again, training partners here. Uh, remember Razzle and Hotashi, they traveled together when the game first came out, when it was like Red Bull Kumite right. Vegas. They were not even in the tournament, but they traveled there to play the international competition. So they've been grinding together even longer than Razzle and uh, Umisho have. So definitely at least Hotashi has the Bridget, right? That's gonna be newer relatively than his Nagori Yuki. And yeah, you mentioned, right? Maybe uh, Razzo will have some trouble with Hotashi taking to the skies. Hopefully he can bait out some flash kicks, get some big counter hit punishes. We'll see. I, I'm excited. I have no idea what to expect. And I, ex the only expectation I have is to be ex like excited. Holy gold burst, Batman. That was incredible. That was amazing. 24 carats to start it off. I mean, you might as well, but it's like Razo doesn't care. You know what? It's not like it. Razo doesn't care. Backdash is too risky move, but the flash kick, like you said, Rin, he will flash kick all day, every day. That was three flash kicks in the span of 10 seconds. Yeah, and Hotashi, he did a great job instant blocking the uh, 6K beforehand, right? And usually you can kind of make something happen off of doing that. But Razo was like, oh, you want to instant block and just reacts with a cancel and a flash kick. Like, ridiculous, ridiculous recognition in the, the span of milliseconds. It is, it is ridiculous. And I love that they're able to do that, both of these players. Uh, good Lord. All right, that's one flash kick. I'm keeping count this time. There's two, oh. and that's gonna go for the wall break and just do it with a third one. Why not? <laughs> Razzle, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, using the uh, projectile to cover themselves so cleanly, and just was going with the infinite reverse B right there. Was basically forcing Otashi to use their FD to push them out, and Otashi never did. So Razzo finds the moment to get the counter hit going. Otashi, I mean, just looking like everybody else up against Razzo, they cannot get comfortable with the tempo they set. 
No, and both Razo and Hotashi want to set very specific tempos. They're actually quite close to each other. Like, they really want to yeah. have this aggressive, fast-paced game. But the thing is, you have to be the player to set that tempo first, because if you aren't, yeah. you are on the back foot. And, I mean, to continue the music reference, you are just, you're in rests. That's all you get. You don't get to play. <laughs> Yeah, straight up, right? And Hotashi, I think that might be the thing that works against him in this matchup against Leo is the comfortability factor and the fact that Razo is just it's, it, playing Leo is second nature to them, right? So they're just right. so like quick with all of their decisions. It's almost instinctual at this point. While Hotashi, he has that game sense that's carrying over to Bridget, but it, I mean, it's just the nature of learning another character. Like you're gonna have to expend some more conscious mental effort to make these decisions that Razo is doing like off instinct. So he's gonna be a step behind. He's just gotta make the moments that he does like guess correctly or make the right reads count for the whole round. That's so true. And I mean, there's really not much more to say. I was curious with that long period of waiting if they were gonna switch back to Nago. Yeah, we're sticking I was with the British. The British, the Bridget, good Lord. My brain just went. Yeah. Where is no she from again? I can't remember. Isn't she from Britain? I think so. I cannot remember that particular part of Guilty Gear lore. There's a lot of Guilty Gear lore that I know, and that part has fallen out of my head. Oh, keep rolling. Just threw the yo-yo the other way. Doesn't matter. I don't need this. Truly do not. Uh, this is actually nice. This is a really good example of Akashi setting the tempo to what they want. Raz is trying to get the foothold back in. The burst is going to reset that, though. Oh, what a block! Mm hmm. Razzo, the dash blocks, right? Not getting caught slipping there. Oh, BP immediately from Otashi. He's going to send it nice and early. The PRC to cover the throw. Oh, and then throws the landing frames. That's huge. Oh, oh and that's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That risky flash kick. Because if you can throw it, and it's not gonna hit it's gonna get you killed and that is an excellent example of that and that's what you have to do with roll pressure with Bridget you have to go with these safe timings that are going to land before you get hit by the flash kick or else I mean Razzle's just gonna have a field day there's the FD we see on the reverse B sequence this time right Hotashi he got bullied in the first game not gonna let it happen again he'll spin the meter oh but then he got bullied it was like yeah, as soon as you said it it was like perhaps I shall get bullied yep yep you will oh no just that like is, that. Just just like that. And that, that's the thing about Leo versus Bridget, is Bridget has to put 10 to 15 more hits on you per combo than Leo does to get the same amount of damage, to get that equivalent damage. What a reversal, oh my life. So and that's another thing that Razzle has specifically, Tempest as well, they've gotten so much better at it, is that players structure their offense in the corner to try to outrange flash kicks sometimes, especially when you have the range of someone like Bridget. So they're just waking up super. So especially if they have a 100 meter, right? It has greater horizontal hitbox, and then they can keep it safe. And even if they don't, they're just so confident because people are facing themselves for the flash kick. Oh my goodness. That RC was... So slick in the middle of that combo, too, because the spacing wasn't quite right, so the inclusion of the RC made it so that whole thing worked. The 2D is caught by Hotashi, though. This could be a place for Hotashi to come back into this. Sends out the projectile and then PRC to try and dash in and cover the spacing. And then Bridget turns into a projectile, which is just a thing that she can do. So. Oh, there's so much offensive pressure, but a burst comes out from Raza trying to take back the momentum. He immediately going with the escape follow-up, actually caught Raz a little early. Oh, the tap goes from long distance. Her range is quite good on that. Oh, couldn't quite get the wall splat. Honestly, with a little bit of damage and the wall break, it could have been it. Razzle holstering the flash kick right there. Maybe he didn't have the charge. I don't know. Maybe just not confident that it would actually beat Bridget from that range. I don't, oh, oh, actually catches goodness. the normal coming in. Counter hit towards the end of the skate as well. So he just gets the link follow-up. Hotashi, nice job. I loved the confidence that Hotashi was able to regain during that. It was so nice to see the foothold come out and just stay there. Oh, the counter hit from the jab. It actually caused so much hit stun that the throw was not able to uh, connect. Oh, wow. The Hotashi's DPs, they didn't use them a lot in the first game, but now they're using them really effectively. Every time Hodashi backdashes, I just fear for my life because I am so afraid Razo is going to take advantage of that. 
Oh, oh there's finally a flash kick. Oh, right back at you, bro. You're not the only one with a reversal. Yeah, the way Tashi has kind of been manipulating Razzo from long range to bait out these flash kicks or bait out certain options. I mean, it's been really effective. But now Razzo, the baiting is done. You're in the Lions, then doesn't get the hit they were looking for with the pillar, but the back turn nest stuffs anything you want to do. That was really scary. That could have been Hitachi's comeback point because the health yeah. was looking pretty equal, but missing that turbulence and then go like you said, going into back turn. That was the what saved it. Razzo, why are you the way that you are? Oh, got caught reaching. I'm on the other side, dummy. <laughs> Like, that's not Hotashi's fault. Yeah. That's just like, you know, how we all feel when that happens to us. Yeah. That is so true. And then uh. just finish it with the super to get as much damage as he physically can. You know you're going to get the tension back. It's not a risk. And then goes in straight for the low, forces to burst out of Hotashi. Just sending out those projectiles. They don't quite reach, except for that one, because Hitachi decided to... Oh, no. Take a knee to the rib cage is what Hitachi decided. Indeed, right? It looked like he was trying to time it so that he would get the YRC while Razzo was applying offense behind the fireball, right? It's right. like, okay, like, obviously, you're going to apply pressure. The fireball's blocking you, but Razzo was just like, no, bro, you know how much we play? Like, I know what you're looking for. I know that you're going to do this because you think I'm going to apply pressure in a safe circumstance, and the YRC can maybe turn the tide, but Razzo just blocking it out. Perfect. It's so cool when you can see the ideas take form and you're like, man, that was really small. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Like, it just, like, you got left on red. Sorry, buddy. Like, that's one of the beautiful things about fighting games, honestly, is like, you can make a smart decision and you'll look stupid doing it. Like, it's just right. like, sometimes your opponent just knows that you're trying to make the smart decision. And I mean, there's usually a counter for everything if the opponent knows that it's coming, right? So it's just really cool. It's, it's incredible. We're getting back into this. Razzo up to this is a three out of five. Uh, winners, losers, grands, three out of five. Love to see it. Uh, stop backdashing, Hotanshi, please. If there's one thing I'm begging you, please, because you're giving me a heart attack. Thank you. Yeah, he's trying. He's definitely trying to make Razzo just flash kick wild, but he's not doing it. No, oh, and then he's not. Just dash up to S. I don't know what Hotanshi was looking for there, but it got counter hit. And now through I'm, the wall, we got positive bonus. Yeah, I'm not sure. And Hitachi has to spend so much, or was spending so much FDing. They barely got that 50%. And then as soon as they stopped FDing to try and get some more of that tension, Razzle was like, this is my time. And she went in and she, she took the round. <laughs> yeah. Like, Hitachi was like, okay, this is the spot. I'll, I'll try instant block instead of FD. And then he just gets counter hit right after. Like, it's... Oh, yeah. Oh, it's rough. Instant block, instant regret. That's what that is. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, missed time the Midi 5k, I believe. So allow Hotachi to take his turn back for now. Oh, oh the first went for an OTG one, but not quite in range. The scramble, though, the PRC not going to save you. Razzo must have went with some type of cancel. It just didn't come out. Yeah, that was, a, what a huge scramble situation. And then Razzle goes in for a grab at the very end. Hitachi countered it with the DP. So we're sitting at a 1-1 in this particular game. So good adjustments there from Hotachi. They only did the one backdash, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, maybe if you got higher into the air right there, but the roll, of course, is going to get stuffed by the projectile again. Oh, the jump kick. Oh, oh, that was a ridiculous conversion. Hotashi didn't want to see any more of it. Gets the counter hit on the slash incoming. Going. Oh. Man, he thinks he's Nagori Yuki. You see the two yeah. S's? I do, I do see the two S's. You, baby, you are not Naga right now, but you know what's working? Got that errant flash kick out of Razzo, but Razzo oh is God, still alive. Like DRC, this. oh, oh my, my God. God. Razzo's gonna get another opportunity here. You're no, in the lines, no. then Hotasha, you're gonna survive. All oh, the risk breakers. Oh, she's alive. But the plus frames are on Razzo's side, the positive bonus on Razzo's side, and all it takes is a singular backhand. Goes with a nice, safe jab to end the set. Oh. That was ridiculous. The thing is, too, like, Hotashi had it in the palm of his hand, and it was one stinking flash kick, and that completely turned the tide of the game. But that does mean that Razzo is going to be sitting in the grand finals waiting for how the rest of this bracket shakes out.
the the health bars are deceiving to the to the naive eye, right? Like honestly, you're like, oh man, Leo, he's only got a hit a hit left. There's no way he can make no. this comeback, right? But like, one one pixel of health on Leo's side might as well be the full health bar. Like if you get oh, knocked yeah. down one time, you might not get to play again. That's what we saw, right? Razo won turning Hotashi. It didn't matter how much health they had at the end because Hotashi was just never able to play offense again. They weren't allowed. They were just not allowed to push the buttons unless they were defensive buttons. And even then, you probably shouldn't have been pushing buttons because it just left you open to a ton of damage. Um, Razzo has been playing out of her mind during this particular tournament. And not that she doesn't a lot of the times, but this is a very, very strong showing from her against incredible mm -hmm. opponents um, in the likes of Hotashi and Umi Show. And then, you know, being able to also fight Dragon King earlier so yeah. they so Razzo's gonna be waiting in grand finals while the rest of this bracket we go through, which is going to be the lower semis and then lower finals. If we're taking a look at that now. So going to see Puzzled and Umi show right after this, and then whoever wins that gonna face Hitashi. Indeed, right. So puzzled, we saw this matchup actually earlier where Umi Show and Puzzled started off our whole fight night's invitational tonight with that. What was it? We actually thought Puzzled was gonna play the May, right? But actually ended up playing the Bridget and Umi Show was the one that brought out the May. Ended up taking it 2-0. But I was impressed with Puzzle's Bridget. I think mean, they definitely had a lot of opportunities where they were able to kind of get the mix-ups going, timing the high and lows right, so the yo-yo follow-up would combo. So they definitely have the offensive potential there. We just got to get those opportunities more so than they did in the upper bracket set. Yeah, and I'm curious to see what characters that these two bring out for this. Umi Show um, in her match against Razo did bring out the Happy Chaos. Uh, not sure what Umi Show chose to play against Column, but in this one, does Umi Show decide to go with the May again? Is Puzzle going to bring out Bridget? Are they going to switch back to who they were? playing i i don't know there's a lot of questions that i have going into this one particularly with character matchup yeah for sure i'm gonna expect to see the same thing we saw in the upper bracket but you know we'll see if uh umi show wants to go all business right go all business we saw the happy chaos come out for razzo and it feels like to me a lot of the time when she kind of uh, goes with one character she kind of goes till she doesn't it's not a lot of switching back when i've seen umi show it's like when she decides to play a character for the rest of the night that's the character she plays so when i take that into account i'm kind of expecting the happy chaos but as you alluded to earlier arc revel around the corner needs to sharpen the may as much as possible if you're really trying to play it for certain matchups at that tournament it, it can go either way it, it really can and Happy Chaos is a very buttonsy character, but there's just an in that there are a lot of buttons that you need to push to make that character work. And May is a charged character. Do you want to make that mental shift this far into the bracket? If you've been sticking with Happy Chaos and you're finding that success and you are getting all of those inputs, uh, everything, you know, there, do you stick with that? Maybe. Uh, do you want to play May and just sit on those charge buttons? I don't know. Yeah, that's a, a good point. Like in terms of like execution, they're very much on the opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to the requirement of the player, right? Like, cause as you mentioned, like the maid definitely charge, like charge normals, charge special moves, like a lot of different things you can kind of do. And then with the happy chaos, it's more of like a like puppet negative edge type joint. But we have a layout on the screen. I don't sure. know who, the Umi, Show, Umi Show's got the Leo on deck as well again, so right. Now Puzzled, who we thought was going to play the May in the opening round that played the Bridget, is on their May in Umi Show. I mean, Leo White Fang, they've seen enough of the gameplay. I'm sure they got a Leo. Oh, I am sure that they do. Like, this is... And you can just see Shades of Razzo in it, and it makes me so happy. <laughs> that flash kick coming out, I was like, oh, no, no, no. That is Shades of Razzo. We know who taught you this character. Exactly right. You can't help it. It's the, the way of life. When you're exposed to a certain style of thing, you just kind of absorb it. It gets the, definitely the DNA. Umi Show going in right now, not letting Puzzle play. Oh, was about to make Razzo proud, but I don't know. I think some disappointment at the end of that round. <laughs> Even though they got the dub in the end anyway. Yeah, throwing out all of those projectiles. It's something that you often see Razzo do at the end of a round, is throwing out the projectiles to try to bait a character into running into those. But uh, surprised that we didn't see the RC follow-up that uh, is so often seen. Not surprised we're seeing this many flash kicks. 
Oh, we don't even doing it on block. We're really reaching into the rude bag. <laughs> reaching into the rude bag, and we got Vallejo flash kicks repeatedly. Yes. And oh. there's the whiff one. They used the burst, that. even though the Umi show did have the RC to change it if they wanted to. But oh, oh the counter hit into the RC, forcing a burst out of Puzzled. Puzzled is trying so hard, and Umi show is stuffing so many things. Well, it's Hubi Rare Whiff. That move has gotten its range buff, so hardly ever do I see it not connect. There it is, that's how I'm getting the knockdown. Cover the whiff throw with an RC of her own. Oh, oh a couple Zachary. of Berserkers. Oh, triple. Try to go with the fourth horseman. Oh, but instead, the overhead's there. Oh, come on, Umisho. Where are you going, buddy? Okay, right there. Go, Mamina. It's so sad when you beat up May because you just are like, I'm sorry, child. <laughs> She's not a child, but still, it's just like, oh, man, you're all sad about it. But Umi show no remorse. No remorse right back into it. Did we even break? I, you know, I, yeah, I got nothing. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. Umi show. Oh, okay, we got an aggressive burst from Puzzled, but no, bro, you have the corner. And now we show with a back throw incident of 2023. Doesn't even <laughs> break it with a super. Oh, losing it. Oh, my goodness. This is just absurd. Oh, okay. Puzzled is we have a chance. Up. Yeah, this is the chance. This is a good throw. Duck into the corner, doing a lot of damage here. Now the positive tension is going to be in oh, Puzzled's court. Yeah. Okay, you knew. You knew. Yeah, you have the PR. Oh! Fair enough. I wish that moment could have been captured because it looked like both of us got punched in the stomach. <laughs> Definitely doubled over. Might as well have took that hit myself. Puzzled. At least they were aware of the 100% tension. The tap dust is such a good round ender. It's so hard to keep that at the forefront of your mind. All flash kick straight through your beach ball. Pop that joint. Oh. Oh, buddy. And as a reminder, this is the best look at, three. Look at the wall. That's the wall, brother. The back turn S. When does it recover? Oh. Yeah, you're golfing. Nah. OK, wow. What a great turn from Puzzled, though. Asagawa comes out in Totsugeki, and then Totsugeki again. But Unisho is going to put the pain train on. Just wake up super. And then RC, that was crazy. It's the jab infinite. Tried to get the wall splat with it. Ubi show, oh man. One of the uh, most stylistic players in the game today. Absolutely, oh, and then no. just an instant grab. You had nothing. You had nothing. Oh my goodness, the king is here. The conditioning too, right? Like I'm gonna let the flash kicks just rip throughout the set. So then when you land next to me and you wanna block cause I've been flashing you the whole time, I'm just gonna throw you. And throw she did. That, okay, I don't think I've ever seen Umi show play Leo. But the, the I love back turn S infinite. I'm yeah, so glad she did that because I literally, that's what I want to do when I play Leo every time. Like, I don't play Leo, but if I play Leo, that's all I do. Because, like, when does that move recover? It just looks like it's infinitely coming out. It does. And the thing was, is that Umi show was so committed to doing it repeatedly that puzzled had to do something and as soon puzzled. as puzzle tried puzzle died it was their namesake like they literally looked at the back turn ass like how do i solve this like i what piece of the puzzle could i possibly put in here tried the totsugeki just get stuffed like i i understand the pain it's not an easy move to overcome no it, it isn't puzzle had a great run made it very far like like you'd mentioned earlier had a Heck of a goal to, to make it through. Yeah, and yeah, did get money. some money. So that's cool for sure. But yeah, definitely had a hell of a time, right? Had to face Umi Show in the first uh, part of the upper bracket. Love, defeated Dragon King 2 1, defeated Casino Dicey 2 1. So you know, those were easy sets, right? Sweated through those, only to face Umi Show again. And man, yeah, Umi Show just switching up what you'd expect to bring out the Leo White thing. I mean, we alluded to some other characters. We never thought the Leo was on the table. So because of that, Umi Show out here again, showing out that, I mean, even when you think you might have something of her game figured out, she's just going to flip the script. I don't, I don't know what to expect. I'm thinking about this one going into it. Hitashi has been finding a ton of success with the Bridget. I think Hitashi sticks with Bridget. I, I don't see 
I don't see a change right now. Yeah. Uh, who is Ubisoft going to bring? I don't know. I just... You... Oh, the May? Okay. Okay. So Umi Show bringing out the May again, doing away with the thing I said earlier about her not switching characters after she switches what. So bringing out the other character at me, I think she really does want to train this for our Rebel. So against so Otashi, this is going to be great practice. I totally agree. And this is so much fun to watch. Oh. Especially considering that we got to see a May, an Umi Show May versus the um, puzzle Bridget earlier. Oh, true, yeah. So this is very different Bridget. This is the aggressive, confident Bridget. But Umi Show, once again, the confidence that she exudes through this game and through her expression of the character, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That exchange, ridiculous. Yeah, that jump age just deleted. I think it was a two age from Otashi. Whatever yo yo trick she tried, it was, didn't score high. Stand up shop again, yeah. See, it, but even that Hotashi, you can see the confidence is already shaking a little bit, right? He put out like the yo yo, and he was waiting for Umisho to respond with something. She ended up going with like a late Totsugeki. So you can tell, just, I mean, she does it to the best players in the world. Positive. With little regard for who they are. Yeah. Uh, oh, so that time. Really... No, go ahead. Oh, that, yeah, that time was able to get. I thought he was going to get anti air, but it was able to get the jump edge just before Umisho got anything out. So, oh, 6 feet from long distance right there. Really taking advantage of the upwards hitbox. Yeah, did the 6 feet result in the guard crush too because it hit the projectile? Oh, I, okay. yeah, I honestly didn't even see. That was, that was a really good round for Hadashi, though. Um, Umisho was making her way back through it, but Hitachi still was in command. Now, this one I'm going to be really interested to see what Hitachi can keep putting out, because the way that they are commanding the air presence is doing a lot for Umisho's game plan and kind of negating what they're doing. Nice burst. Bro, yeah, I can't even make any of those extensions. That's what we were talking about. Like, her mid-screen damage is so high. Hitachi forced the burst in that instance. DP gets chucked. Didn't actually get the damage from the throw, but nonetheless... Okay, wow, I blinked and Hitachi is well into gut now. So, yeah, man, life support. Yeah, oh, I like that. Regular throw. Yeah, the, Hitachi's been using that regular throw really effectively throughout this tournament. Yeah, and that jump S that'll hit two times. He only let it hit once and canceled, and then, like, that really, I think, messed up what Umisho was expecting. It allowed for the throw to happen, but oh, that me up, fam. Umisho coming in with a jump P to get the job done. I mean, sometimes jump P is all you need to get things mm -hmm. finished. Uh, Ramathal Valentine, queen of jump P's. <laughs> it's definitely part of the clan, the jump P clan. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a walk up six P. I love the anchor guard crush that Umi Show is using too, just to sort of get Hotaki staggered. It's really mm -hmm. nice. Oh my gosh, how do you block all of that and then tech the incoming grab? You're just, you uh, know, you know each other. Her defense is off the charts. Even look at that, the dash of block. It's perfect timing. Oh my gosh. And the, swing in the anchor in the skies. You don't want to trade with that. No. Oh, oh and I was going to bring it up. Nice job from Otashi, though. Great command grab with Rock the Baby, too. That was a really excellent recovery from Otashi. Great awareness and use of their resources through that. Counter hit comes out. Umisho still has burst. This is still just round one. Just outside the range of Totsugeki, found the 2k punish. Otashi. Oh no! It does actually hit a uh, not safe range. It was only safe if he had the RC behind it. Umisho loves her reversal orca, but tech throw after the hit on the 2k. Or excuse me, tick throw, not tech throw. Let's rock. This thing. This is way more explosive than I was expecting, and this is not the characters that I was expecting. <laughs> I really like it. I love that Umi Show is showing is showing so much prowess on so many different characters today. Just showing the grasp that she has in this game. Also, goodbye, most of Hotashi though. Uh huh. And we see that 50% tension. Otashi got to be careful. He puts her in a block string. The Orca might be coming. He even walked up right there. And Umi shows. I'm just gonna jab, fam. Yeah. There it is, the Orca, bro. We just talked about it. Otashi gonna burst out of the rest of the damage. Try to keep this corner. But you've got to be aware of it. Umi Show loves to let it rip. Umi Show does. But I love that after that burst, Umi Show still had the RC to keep it safe. Kicks Otashi's yeah. into the thighs. Dual three. Taking this to a round three. 
indeed. Uh, six feet this time coming out from Otashi's side. Oh, and then stuffing the Totsugeki. Umisho trying to catch him off guard. Wow, what a burst time he actually put Otashi in the corner. That was a ridiculous decision. The exchange, the knowledge, it's so incredible. What a counter hit in response, though. Yeah, 2 H. It's a good button to kind of uh, stop Mace from autopiloting there. RC to slow down to the 6P, just dashing away. <gasps> oh my goodness, that was such a tense moment. 2 K P D coming out from Hotashi. You see that, Hotashi? Out. Yeah, he's not canceling, right? He doesn't want to get hit by the super again, so that's why he's just laying these normals rock and not doing anything after. Oh. From distance, the extra bit of dash, knowing Otashi wasn't going to immediately act. Oh, the Hali Misho knows everything. All recovered in time. I thought the beach ball and May was going to get popped, but uh-uh. I thought 50 so, too. 50% tension again, by the way. You got to be careful. Yeah, but Hatashi has burst, so they've got to be super careful. Okay, there's a the PRC staying way out of range. Asagata comes out again. And a oh, oh, this is devastating. Indeed, and he just commits to the follow-up, allowing for Umisho to get the easy punish afterwards. Yeah, that was tough. I know that 24 karat burst right there had to be so demoralizing for Hotashi. Like, when you're fighting tooth and nail with barely any health left on both sides, knowing that any stray hit is going to mean the end, for your opponent to get a gold burst like that and you have no meter, I, just mentally, mentally, it's so, so detrimental. Uh, it, and that's the thing, like, that's a mental stack breaker. That pushes your mental yeah. stack right over. Now, Hitachi no stranger to that happening. We'll see how they recover in this round. Um, not well. Never mind. Big hit. Has to use the burst already, because that was going to be a ton of damage if they didn't burst right when they did. Mm-hmm. Hitachi's saving. Oh, no. The 6H counter hit. All right, not too much damage. Still, though, for a three-piece, that was hefty. This is, ooh, the air movement from Umisho, so spectacular. Once again, the side switch after that RC, incredible. Hitachi trying to challenge the incoming. Bye-bye! Yeet. Oh, man. <laughs> the uh, yeet and retreat. Let's go to the round. <laughs> yeah, I like that yeet and retreat. I like it. We're out of here. Oh, oh, God. Yeah, it looked like the beach ball didn't exactly land how it was supposed to, but the DP was going to go through it anyway. Oh, oh yeah. He's all, he's all the here. You get a whole whale, you get your ticket to Sea World, and it is non refundable. Mm hmm. Oh, this right. side. oh, just trying to walk the dog up. Umi Show's not playing with you, fam. No tricks allowed. No, none. But tons of resource there for Hitachi. Spends 50% to get that wall break. Uh, goes into the toes. Umisho was not ready for it. Umisho has to break the Roger dive. Incredible awareness. And that's going to wrap up that round. Yeah, that was really cool. Great time to use it as well because Umisho wasn't really FDing because she wanted that 50% tension right. So that was like prime spot. You weren't getting pushed back. Right. Oh my gosh. Immediate wall break. That was it was six seconds into that round. And we had a wall break already. Getting guard yeah. crushed situation. Ooh, caught back dashing as Umisho has to burst because that's gonna be a lot for Hitachi. Oh, the Tota Geki cutting him off. Hotashi tried to set up shop. The positive bonus letter built another 50%. And that's Umisho in grand finals. That Totsugeki came from another zip code. <laughs> After that art, it was like RSP Totsugeki. It might as well have been coast to coast because mm -hmm. of how far that it traveled. And it threw me off. But I mean, Hotashi, great to see Hotashi make this run through this whole bracket with a character that not many of us have seen them play. We know that Hotashi plays this character, but now we know Hotashi plays this character. Mm -hmm. And now we know Umisho really serious about this May as well, 3-0. And, you know, that's another thing that I think people are still getting a little bit used to. And it's just one of those things in general that players are never going to be able to truly judge consistently. And that's the Totsugeki range because she can change it now, right? If she holds forward, she goes faster and farther. So because of that change, like, you never actually know. Like, you can never get used to us. You can get used to a specific set of, like, three ranges or, like, some variable ranges, but you're never going to be 100% confident on where that Totsugeki is going to end up in front of you. So, yeah, I mean, that's just another thing that's always going to annoy players and something that's going to forever be a detriment to a mental stack. 
Definitely. Hotashi is still in that money, taking third. Uh, but now we have a matchup that we have seen time and time and time and time again, and it never gets old. Yeah. We have Grand Finals, Razo versus Umi Show. And I'm going to be real, it's a 50-50 who's going to take it. Because on any given day, either Razo or Umi Show can just clean sweep. And it, it mm -hmm. just does not matter who they're playing, what character they're doing. I mean, really at this point, I think it comes down to whoever has what cereal for breakfast, because that seems to be <laughs> the only deciding factor. Right, yeah, who who got the last of the Lucky Charms before the uh, the milk ran out? That's definitely something that could be what does be is the deciding factor between these two, because I mean, it really is just a flip of the coin about who's going to get the W. Of course, in the upper bracket set where they played earlier, Razzle was able to take it 2-0. Umi Show was playing the Happy Chaos. I have to imagine that the May is at least somewhat for Leo, considering the trouble that Tempest has given Umi Show at a couple of tournaments. So I, I'm hoping that we get to see the May versus the Leo here, but it could be all business, right? I mean, obviously, Umi Show is going to know what character is going to be the best against Razzle more so than me, than anybody else, right? Considering how much they play. So I, I'm just interested in seeing how she goes about approaching this grand finals. And I really like that you said how Umi Show is going to approach Razzle because it's yeah. not Razzle's Leo. It's yeah. probably going to be Razzo's Leo, let's be real. But it's how she approaches Razzo because yeah. they fight. I mean, and I said it before when they were fighting before, they they fight each other. They fight the players. And that's what makes this matchup so exciting. That's why no matter how many times I see this, it just is incredible. And the outcome is just different every time. Yeah, when you get used to fighting uh, a player's character a certain amount, right, the character becomes, uh, I don't want to say an afterthought, but kind of that connotation, right, where the player decisions and the player habits, you know them so well that a lot of your decisions are based off that context. It's not about the character anymore. That's like second nature. That's like something you know what the player utilizes to get to where they want to be. But you know where they want to be. When you know them that deeply, it's more about that, right? So, yeah, I, for for this grand finals it's really anybody's game i'm excited i have no idea what to expect i have no idea what to expect uh this is also three out of five um mm -hmm. everything going to be three out of well i mean this is it this, i was gonna say everything to up to after this if there is a grand finals reset it will also be three out of five but um umi show coming from the lower side of this bracket will have to reset it in order to take it if she wants to uh razzo just has to win three yeah exactly right razzo has that winner side advantage sitting pretty in the pole position so if this first set goes their way then it's all good it's all wrapped up nice and clean and i mean considering the momentum they've had coming into this set hopefully their confidence is at an all-time high considering they already too old umi show right and i mean just in general the way they've been playing i mean it, that's like my favorite thing about razzo is that even when they lose they don't ever look like they second guess their decisions like it no. is hard commitment like this is my game plan i'm confident this is gonna work i never see it right when we saw at the beginning of like the umi show hotashi set right there was like after that first round we saw hotashi already start kind of second guessing some of these decisions trying to hesitate to bait certain things out and really trying to like react to the game plan of what umi show was gonna bring razzle like has all those things figured out already like they're so confident in what they're gonna do in the moment that like they make their decisions and even if it doesn't go their way they have the layer that's prepared for whatever's next and they just keep turning that page so it's a really cool to see them play i'm always always just enthralled with it. it it is it doesn't get old for me and i think that's the thing like as we continue into the life of guilty gear strive which is you know gonna have a long lifespan considering that we already have tournaments announced through august at least for this game um, we're just going to keep seeing these stories and we're going to see new people get into these top eights, but we're also going to see old favorites in these top eights and we're going to continue to have matchups like this. The thing that is exciting that this being a three out of five is that before it was, you know, a two out of three. And we were talking about how much more aggressive and assertive Razo is in those two out of three situations. Do we get to see that same assertion, that same, you know, dominance of will in this three out of five situation? Or are we going to see more of that like long game setup? 
Yeah, right. That's definitely something that we can kind of keep in mind is how Razo kind of goes about the tempo in a longer set. If there's like certain decisions that she's going to try to establish early, like the flash kick, right? Is it going to be in these wild neutral situations? Is it just going to be on the wake up? Like, is it going to be between block strings? And I am glad to see that Umi Show is going to be trying the May to start it off. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Get it nice and sharp for that arc rebel that's coming up in just a few weeks but this is grand finals of playstation fight nights again all invitational bracket all ps5 razzle versus umi show a tale as old as time itself let's get it Ooh. oh i love that the first hit is just them five peeing each other i know just, it was like rock paper scissorings with the jabs bro like what's yeah, happening again oh and then what a throw yeah just switch the sides right take the corner for herself umi show Oh, and Razzle with the did, did wake up dash flashing. Did you see that? That was, like, so that was ridiculous. And I love it. Like the slight of forward momentum on that flash kick. That was bananas. It was. Also, I love that they chose this stick. Oh my God. But why are you this way, Bert? Razzo doesn't I like that one. Umi Show doesn't like the counter hit in return. Oh, this is a great first round. This is a spectacular. How is this just the first round? Right. Putting it all out there. Razzo has the tension. Oh, still to block that, though, the activity of the anchor. Oh, man, the Berserker Slash actually reaches FD to try to get that distance. And the successful blocks plus the FD gave Umi Show that confidence to press them. Oh, my good lord. All yeah, praise I mean, Dicey because this is exactly what his vision was. Oh, I just I can only hope the rest of the rounds go like that. You see the hesitation on the jump K, or excuse me, the back turn K right there. Like, yeah. again, it's just uh, one of those things you see between sparring partners. Yeah, like just a little bit of that hesitation. Ooh, and again, they're micro moving. Watch the feet of the characters because the way that they're moving is so specific. Mm -hmm. Let me show. Oh. Barely surviving, and not for long. razzle has been so consistent with the dash of five Ps, whether it hits them on the ground, whether it hits them in the air. There's always a good decision. This neutral, the way that they play their starting neutral game, it's like a game of chicken. Who's gonna throw out something first? Yeah. Oh, oh both what players. a stagger, too. Oh, the jab to actually stuff the guard break. That was really important defense. They are reading each other so well. This is incredible. This is such good games. That's the counters. And then using these light buttons, not buttons that we often see out of Razo to start this entire sequence. Gonna go ahead and spend the bar. Yeah, please do as much damage as you can. Not gonna die, but gonna be bleeding. Yeah, I mean, you can see Razo definitely respecting the reversal Orca, right? The threat of it looming in the distance. Just did the jab, backed off the first time, and then getting the tick throw at the end. Great, great job. What's incredible to me is how, when they played before, when they were in the um, upper bracket semifinals, how much less respectful uh, Raza was playing against the Happy Chaos because we're so familiar with that. There's a level of respect here that is totally different for the May, and I really like seeing that. Yeah, most definitely. And with Happy Chaos, right, like, you have to take advantage of those moments. Like, the defense for him is the weakest part. Oh, well, on the other hand, with here, Umisho, he got these options, like the Totsugekis from certain distance, the Reversal Battle Orcas. I love that Razo isn't just, like, mindlessly rushing down. The 5P jab counter hit conversions again. Yeah, and then in return, 5P counter hits from Umisho, trying to change that corner situation, backdashing to get that Totsugeki, get the advantage. The, went in for the grab, that was Razo's time, oh. but unfortunately, Umisho dropped out of it. Yeah, a rare drop from Razo, gonna give Umisho a chance now. Oh, I thought they were gonna bet on a throw, but Razo instead just FD and oh. trying to get some distance back. No punish on the whip throw, but the 5K. Who needs a run when you got the 5K dash button? Um, not Razo, that's for oh. sure. Because as I say that, it wish. Of course it does. Of course, because <laughs> why wouldn't it? This is our life now. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we're used to it at this point. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, Burst did come out from Ubisoft Bruh. in that situation. What are you doing, Razzo? Why are you doing, Razzo? <laughs> Razzo. There's a threatening with the far buttons into the guard point stance. But Ubisoft is not playing with that game. 
No. Oh, YRC. Oh, what a challenge with the burst. Or, I'm sorry, with the dust from the YRC. And we should win with the burst tape combo after that. Was definitely trying to bait it out from Razzle. That's why some damage was left on the table there. Okay. Ooh, just coming in. The way that Razzle chooses to do, like, repeated move sets to just, like, sort of bait yeah. you into doing something that you find risky. And once again, doing it there, getting Umisho to throw out a button that I don't think she wanted to. But it doesn't matter. 2K2D into a dolphin. That's going to get some damage out on the table. But then, Razzo, it's your turn now, friend. Oh, Turbulence misses again. Rare drop. Yeah, and the, oh, the back dash on the overhead attempt. That's one of the best ways to call out that really allows you to take your turn in an instance where you usually can. No, oh, the Leo fist, that 2D, and then the dunk overhead. Leo's moves that were so excellently designed that it is just delivers pain across the screen, and that is what Umisha is feeling right now. That is, that is Ooh, painful, babe. but it's not gonna kill. Scaling is a thing. The gut, and she's a beefy character, not pressing a darn thing, Razzo. Doing a great job not getting baited into that, right? It's a great call from Umi Show, and we talked about it. You can make smart decisions. Doesn't mean you're gonna look smart while doing them. Right there, Razzo baiting out the uh, reversal super and taking a 2-0 lead. I'm speechless. Like, I was really, I was listening to the end of what you were saying, and I'm trying to cue up something to say afterwards, and I was like, man, Razzo. <laughs> The dessert has made such ridiculous decision every time, every chance they've gotten. Like, it's just been correct. Like, it's scoring 100%. Oh, we're serious, serious now. I mean, right? Tried that Abbey Chaos before, lost 2 0. The May also down 2 0. So, gotta go with your tried and true, what you're most comfortable on at this point. <laughs> I think in the, never mind. I'm gonna stop what I'm saying. Razo, look how much more aggressive they're being right now. Because you have to be. You cannot let Umisho get started with this character, and they know it. Tons of backdashing already coming out. The RC forces the burst. Umisho's already into gut. Yeah, exactly right. Umisho's finally getting a chance to play here, but it cost them their burst. So like that's honestly a big dub for Razo. Even if they lose this round, they're gonna be able to run rough shot early on in the next round. Oh, nice what air a nice throw. Year. Yeah, and the air throw. The YRC comes out. Immediate headbutt trying to get something done and trip Umi show up. That's oh, it for that kill. round. Wow, I can't believe it ended up killing on the last hit. Razzo tournament point here. This is incredible. All right, much stronger start for Umi show. Gets that burst out pretty immediately. Razzo does not care about your moveset my friend oh. because she just goes straight through it yeah i honestly thought razzo was gonna get a clean whiff punch on that 2s attempt but one of the rare moments where umi show did not pay for a whiff button instead big rewards here able to break the wall positive bonus plus frames as well what are we gonna do with it well why are oh. blocked and punished that honestly should be the round it should be with all of this meter yeah i am surprised that I'm surprised that Umisho didn't close it out with Deus Ex Machina, but I get, you know, just push a button because all you needed was one. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Dash is straight through that curse. Yeah, I like that, right? Like, he didn't really care, or she didn't really care that she was going to get cursed because the Berserker Slash was going to go through and hit Happy Chaos anyway. That was so smart. Ooh, this combo. Happy Chaos combos, they break my hands, but they look so spectacular when I they're executed them. cleanly. Yeah, I, I honestly really like playing the character. Like, he is super fun to play. You have to be very active. You're always doing some kind of wild stuff with your fingers, but man, he is a menace to play against. Yeah. Oh no, your dual sense wireless batteries can blow. <laughs> Gotta hurry this one up. Yeah, quick, quick charge, me. Let's keep the grand finals clean. Oh, 2D. Oh, that time the turbulence is going to hit. A big return exchange there. Overhead comes out, going to close this particular section out with that damage get the area shift get your positive tense positive tension and just keep up the pressure prc was trying to change it up why rc yeah what's messed up about that too was that you saw umisho they tried to backdash the overhead again it just slightly mistimed i mean that's how much you pay for when that happens no super on deck so you just gotta break the wall regular okay oh that was a really good follow-up but umisho ready yeah, very brave button press from Mumi Show right there. 
was doing it after the PR ski on the fireball, but that's exactly why she did it. Knew that Razzle would have taken some longer turn, and that's exactly what happened. This is definitely the character switch that Umi Show needed because Razo was used to fighting somebody totally different. Now, does Razo adjust quickly within this next round so that they can come back here? Right now, it's not looking very good. The dash under after the RC from Umi Show looking really clean, getting the curse out there as well, but the 2D into the PRC and getting that flash kick. This is a nice look for Razo. He has to leave his game here. Oh, the super delay jump H right there. That was funky timing. Umi Show not blocking her dome. Nice, the fireball to delete the clone and go through it. Razo, so smart. Duel three. I am blown away by their decision making, both of them. Yeah. And then. Oh, the flash kick. oh no, there was the round star flash kick. There it was. We've been looking for it the whole day. Finally got it. Indeed, as soon as Razzle got close, knew we sure was going to try some type of option. What a whip punish right there with the 2X. You're going wall to wall. Instead, the burst prevents that. I, I love the projectile with the PRC dash to follow it up. It's so threatening because you get the whole screen that way. Tap Dust gonna knock no Razzo bullets. up. PRC 2 gonna keep going, so the combo was not finished. I needed to show this off, thank you. Indeed, we show was running low on bullets a couple of times at the end there. Could have closed it out, but because of that, Razzo's getting an opportunity right now. Umi Show is still bulletless and playing defense. This is a scary spot to be in. Throws whatever yeah. defensive option you tried there. Yeah, if Umi Show does not get a bullet back, then this is, this is devastating. I'm not sure. Oh, I am sure. That's it. Yeah, Razzo taking the PlayStation Fight Nights Invitational for Guilty Gear Stride. Not dropping a set in the process. The queen sits her throne today. Incredible stuff from Razzo today. Able to fight a wealth of different characters. She did spectacularly. Umi Show, not to count her out either, playing a lot of different characters as well today, showcasing that she is not the happy chaos one trick pony that we, I mean, we know that she's not, but yeah. she is really showing off that she is a versatile player and can really play this well. So your top three, once again, Razo, Umi Show, Hotashi, and of course we cannot count out Puzzled who had a great run tonight as well. Yes, indeed. Puzzle got that fourth place, got in the money themselves, showing off the Bridget and the May. Yeah, just definitely big ups to all of our players for the fight nights, right? Really put on an entertaining bracket. Of course, grand finals went to Razzle, as it often does, right? Because of how good they are. Definitely, though, I love the display that we got to see from everybody. Just in general, another beautiful night of Guilty Gear here on the PlayStation tournaments. It was really fabulous display of skill. What a fun thing to do too for the Invitational. You know, like we've mentioned before, this is often an open bracket. And if you want to get involved with this open bracket series or any of the PlayStation tournaments, go to compete.playstation.com where you can find a variety of different fighting games and other games where you can sign up and compete right from your home from your PlayStation. So go sign up. It's a ton of fun, definitely worth doing. And maybe you can be featured on one of our streams. Yeah, most definitely. And the finite invitationals, they keep on rolling. You can see ticket at the bottom of your screen right now, right? Tomorrow we'll have the Tekken 7 Fight Night Invitational, so be sure to tune into that. Rainbow Six on the docket as well. And if you're looking to get really in-depth and get to the meat of all these situations, you could actually go to the community Discord for the PlayStation tournaments. You can join there to find updates on the events articles. You can meet other players to get your games going and get your practice up. It is definitely a great spot to kind of grow yourself as a fighting game player. There's also community figures that host play sessions and interviews. Definitely a prime spot to check out if you're in the FGC. Yeah, definitely want to check out that Discord because there's a lot of cool things that are going to be happening um, within that. And so, I mean, just go ahead, grab that, get that information. And it's a, it's a hop in Discord. Like, I already have notifications on it from the last time I cleared it. So definitely worth checking out. That is going to wrap it up for us here tonight. I am Jadlin. You can find me at across all socials on the handle that you've seen on your screen and this is Ringe. what about you yeah man everything pretty much at Ringe underscore so be sure to hit that up you guys already know what it is thank you for joining us for another fight nights again the playstation tournaments ain't stopping there's a fight nights tomorrow till then be good to yourselves be good to each other and we'll see you soon
Time.